Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Rush Green on this classic Friday night. It's a Premier League International Cup fixture between West Ham United and Brighton and Ove Albion. It's not only just your typical standard game, it's a knockout game. And for tonight's knockout game in this competition, I'm joined with Mr. Mark Phillips. Mark, hello, how are you? Evening, you all right? Yeah, all good, all good. Good to hear from you, good to see you. How are you going into this game tonight? What are your emotions as a West Ham coach? How are you feeling about this fixture and the magnitude of the game too? Well, you've just informed me that you're officially a Brighton fan and a Brighton man, so there's a bit of a, a kind of rivalry, polite rivalry in the, in the commentary dugout, shall I say. Well, potentially so, potentially so. I will have to drop my, um, my bias for this evening. I'm a commentator for just tonight, although I may be looking out for the Brighton 
team slightly more th than yourself, but uh, I'll allow you to bring your to bring your your favoured West Ham bias to this evening um, with no issues at all. I'm looking forward to this one. I think two teams that play a nice style of football, two teams that like to play the game, and of course a big game too at this level. I think it's 21's level. Brighton's always been, you know, Brighton's always been a competitive game, whether it be a home or away, league or cup, it's always a competitive game. And I don't think there'll be any change tonight. It's a tough game. As I quite often say, it's a tough game for both sides, for Brighton and for West Ham. It's a tough game. Absolutely. You haven't played each other. We well, both teams, we haven't played each other. Can I say we about Brighton? I'll say that Brighton haven't played you, I suppose, for for some time since last February. And that was two equal results. 3-2 to the home side, both games. You can say we, because I'm always going to say we about West Ham United, because I am West Ham United. So if you're as much Brighton as I am West Ham, we're OK. I'll see you in the car park afterwards. Gum, some gum shields. We'll see how we get on. <laughs> let's go, let's go. It's good to see that. Of, cause, of course, a few weeks ago, Mark Mark implied and said that how Kaelin Katie, of course, is starting tonight as the captain. Bought him some Predator boots, and three weeks later, it was beautiful to actually see them on you. Traditional football boots with a tongue as well. Haven't seen that for a long time, Mark. You That's have style. I must explain, I'm not commentating with the boots on. I was doing the warm-up before the commentary. The other ones, people would think I am a bit of a weird character. And I just come across from doing the warm-up in the said Predator boots, so that's why I've seen them. Well, of course, for the lineups tonight, just before the teams do come out, it is two changes. I mean, just as we look on to the West Ham side, Mark, Joseph Anang back in goal. Usually it is Jacob Knightbridge. Of course, Anang has played every game in the Premier League International Cup. Is that a tactical decision? What's the reasoning behind that? I think it's just a case of, you know, you know, if you're the number three keeper at the club, you know, for the first team, you need to play football. You need some games. So when available to play for the 21s, Joseph comes across and plays. A bit unfortunate on Jacob, who we've done excellent in the last game that we covered. But, you know, Joseph is the number three for the first team and he needs regular football if... Anything happened to Fabs or anything happened to, you know, Ariola, he needs to be ready to go and play for the first team. So he needs constant football. So that's why one of the reasons that Joe's in goal. Absolutely. And here he is leading the lines out as the both sets of players make their way onto the pitch at Rush Green. So, of, so of course, we'll start with the home side and it is two changes since their result against Spurs. Of course, that drew one uh, piece. Two changes, but keeping their spots in the lineup, it looks like it is going to be a back three with Luizao, Lewis Orford, and Levi Lang. With Junior Robinson and Ollie Scarls on the wing back positions. And then a midfield of Patrick Kelly and Lewis Orford. Uh, with George Earthy and Sean Moore leading the line and Divin Mabama up top. Kaelin Casey in the back three, not Lewis Orford. Substitutes on the bench after starting against Tottenham is Kamari Swaya, Jacob Knightbridge, of course, Dan Rigg, Alicia Sornmi, Regan Clayton, Sean Tarima and Ryan Batram. And for the hosts, Brighton, oh, for the visitors, Brighton and Hove Albion. They have just come off a 4-3 defeat in the league against Stoke City. So they'll be looking to try and get back to winning ways. And it's four changes since that game. Another goalkeeper change, of course, Killian Cahill coming back in for the Albion. Odell Fire, Jacob Slater, Lee Kavanagh, Noel Atom in defence. The captain, Sammy Shashane, back in the under-21s after experiencing some time with the first team is the Australian Cameron Pupion, Jamie Mullins, the striker Mark O'Mahamini. Kamari Doyle makes his first start for the Albion since penning a deal on deadline day from Southampton just a few weeks ago. And in midfield as well, of course, number 11, Luca Barrington. Substitutes for the away side, Joe Knight, Hugo Fisher, the goalkeeper, Louis Flower, one to watch out for, Mark. He knows where the back of the net is in this competition. In fact, he was the player that won it for Brighton in their home game against Celtic. Rory McConville, Josh Duffus, Kalen Vickers and Casper Nilsson. So, both sets of players out on the pitch, Mark. Brighton will be the team to get us off underway here under the lights. How has the week been in prepping for this game? 
Uh, if I'm perfectly honest, I've been away for the week celebrating my son-in-law's 40th birthday on the Norfolk Bulls in terrible weather. Oh. But uh, Potsy and Gerard informed me that the, the, the training week's gone well and we're ready, we're ready to go. I was at the game on Saturday against Spurs, a one-all draw, very good under-21s game of football. I think we should have won the game. But again, we all know I'm biased, so... There we go. Well, here is Kamari Doyle, the player that has just joined the Albion. Already there's an early attack. It's fizzed across the face of goal, and Nang looked like he was called into action there. And it was the 11, Luca Barrington, down this left-hand side. Corner to the Albion. Quick start for the Seagulls. Well, when did Doyle, Doyle join, join Brighton? Because, I mean, I, I assumed he was still at Southampton. I didn't know when he, when he joined. So it was on February deadline day. Oh, um, right. And it was back in January, of course. He signed uh, for Southampton, made his pro debut. Or Southampton, in fact, in a 3-1 loss against Brighton, it was, last May at the Amex. And then he penned a deal for the Seagulls in January. An astute signing and one that Russell Martin, the manager of Southampton, wasn't best pleased with. I think he was rather disappointed at the departure of Doyle. And, of course, already he's looking lively in this opening one-minute corner on that far side. Not the best delivery, unable to beat its first man, Obama clears with ease. Getting back to Doyle, last year in the Youth Cup, obviously we played Southampton in the semi-final. We, me and a colleague went to Preston to see him play in the quarter-final and Doyle was far and away the best player on the pitch. I can imagine why Russell Martin feels like that. I think he's a good signing for Brighton. Didn't even know he was here until you mentioned it. Good player, he's a good player. Very exciting player on Brighton's hands. They're, they're used to... Of course, they've, they've got this name now in the last few years where everyone knows people realise that they can bring these players through, typically from overseas, South America especially. But in the January transfer window, when looking at the signings that they did make for their under-21s, they have got a lot of players from England. Of course, you've also got... Caelan Vickers on the bench as well, who, who signed from Reading on deadline day. Junior Robinson looks to be in some pain on this near side. The referee just blows his whistle to bring it back. It was Jacob Slater, another new boy, albeit from last summer. Jacob Slater coming into the side for Brighton. But it, it, as you say, it does show ambition from Brighton to be buying players at 21 level, you know, hoping to polish them up and get them in the first team. And then I vote no do well for the first team or sell them on for quite a considerable amount of money it, it is sort of like what they do and they do it well and, and I can see why players would go to Brighton you know to further their career it's a lovely touch there though from the West Ham man it's played in field oh, from left. Out to Junior Robinson, who has a lot of joy down this right-hand side, as we mentioned, Mark. Often so keen to join in in the attack. I think Junior tends to play his best football in the second half when the game gets stretched and there's lots of gaps for him to run into. To Shane involved there with Doyle to try and win it back for Brighton as he spreads it out to a fire on that far side. Of course, it was Brighton and West Ham who were in the same group in this competition. Brighton just edged it in terms of form, but they both finished top two with Chelsea just in third, who, of course, have just... They lost to PSV last Thursday at Stamford Bridge 2-1, so PSV have booked their spot in the Premier League International Cup semi-finals. Now it's West Ham or Brighton's chance to do so. Of course, you're aware, Norfolk. I was going to say that sounds lovely. The weather may not have made it as much, but I'm sure the company was certainly... Yeah, as I said, it was my, like. my son-in-law's 40th birthday. If, if I never see a pair of Wellington boots ever again, I'll be, uh, I'll be delighted. You had to have Wellington boots to get from the car to the house we was in. It was that flooded, but that didn't put us off. As Steve, as Steve Potts mentioned much about how West Ham trained this week, how they've been, what's the vibe like in the dressing you know, room you, after, no, of course? No, 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 I mean, as I, as I go, I know... I had this team last year as 18s. They're a good group, you know. They're, they're a good, they're a good training group. They're always really sharp out, want to do the best because it's a good group. They're always competing with each other to be the best trainer on the day, and that's what you want as a coach. That's exactly what you want. Always, you know, pushing each other. Absolutely. And Steve Potts said before the game that 
The last few games they've had have been tricky. They've been difficult. You had Chelsea, you had Spurs, now Brighton. Three tough sides to come up against, Steve Potts said. So it's that kind of competition, that, that regular play against those tougher sides that can improve a player. Doyle finding room out to Barrington. He puts it across the face of goal. Slight miscommunication there as O'Mahony tries to pounce. Slater into Barrington again. I think Doyle, Doyle in that little pocket's caused us a few problems. Made one or two very astute passes. Looks like he's been, looks like he's been at Brighton all his life, the way he's settled tonight. Only a matter of weeks, but so far he looks like he could be some player. Of course, only five minutes gone. Has he had any involvement, first team on the bench or anything like that since he's been at Brighton? Not yet, not yet. He's, he's only, he only made his debut, actually, in fact, against Stoke City. He came okay. on for the last half an hour, so this was his first start. So his, this will give him a real idea and of starting and, and playing a game around, around these players that are now his teammates. Of course, he was in and around the Southampton first team before he signed for Brighton, so he is used to that first team football. I mean, he, he grew up through the age groups at Southampton, so they obviously knew him well. Brighton, uh, not saying they're yet to trust him, but they want to see what he's, he's about before maybe he moves up to first team level. Certainly exciting for both sets of, pl both sets of players when you get come across these gems that you feel can add some real venom to even the first team, let alone the under 21s. Here's Robinson making a charge down that right as he tries to put a ball in. Plenty of height on it, comes off a fire. West Ham get a corner in the end after the ball didn't look that promising mark, but the outcome is. No, it didn't. He, he kept it, as we say, on the island and, and, and kept it in there. And the, the defender had to deal with it. And from that, we've got, we've got a corner. Wasn't the greatest of crosses, but as I say, kept it on the island and, and we're in there. Always, always think if, if, if the opposing team don't defend properly from set pieces, we always have a chance, especially with Caleb and Lewis Sow getting on the end of it. Absolutely, Lewis Sow knows where's the back of the net is. Casey has a go at the back post, cleared away on the byline by Kamari Doyle, the player who's been attacking most of the fixture, has done his defensive duties there as Casey looked to almost find a player in Claret and Blue. I nearly was going to say, told you so, but it didn't quite happen. <laughs> well, you've still got 82 minutes to do that, Mark. Although. The size of the player they had marking Caelan, if you noticed, I'd fancy Caelan to beat him more often than not in the air. So, as you say, the, the night is young. Great cross. Good ball and Mabama leaping. See, he was trying to fiercely head that in. Earthy in towards Mabama, who just is unable to hold on to it. And here is Pupion, who tries making a run. He breaks the line, unable to just take it past Skiles. Good defending there from the wing back. I think Devine chose the wrong side there. George played it into him. We're looking for a one-two. Devine chose to go left rather than right. A little one-two. George might have been in. Brighton just managing to play out from the back nicely here, as Atom was originally put under pressure. It's a lovely clip pass from Barrington into Doyle, who's giving Lang something to think about. Slater puts it in low. Looks like it's bound to be hit. It hits the crossbar. Barrington. The player who struck it goalwards. Warning signs shown from Brighton, Mark. Without a doubt, again, it, again, it comes from Doyle. It was a simple little ball down the left, but Doyle, the pass before the pass comes from Doyle. I suggest that uh, our commentators should get a, a little bit unexcited until they score. He was going mad in the bar. Calm down, fella. I'm only joking with you. <laughs> it was good football, actually. It was good True football. rivalry in the dugout here, but we keep that aside. Lang. Out to Casey. I do you think West Ham need to get a grip of Doyle? Definitely when he when he's receiving it in those pockets of space. It's only simple passes, but he's he's actually getting Brighton in most of the times of possession. The sort of thing that now George on the ball can do as well. Earthy just slowing down of the ball, opening up some room. Here's Kelly. It's time with a bit of possession in the opposition half, but it's lost out there. Doyle. Orford just keeping tabs on him. Yupion back to a fire. Apart from, of course, Kamari Doyle, who 10 minutes ago you didn't know he 
wore the stripes of Brighton. Do you know much about the away side this afternoon or this evening, Mark? If I'm honest, I don't. If I'm honest, I, I really don't. I mean, I know, I know their coaching staff. I, I went to went to the Hong Kong tournament with the fellows doing the Brighton team, but I don't know much about their team. That Shannon Ruth or yeah, 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 yeah. It was a few years before COVID. It was now the Hong Kong Sevens. They were doing the, obviously the Brighton team, and I was doing the West Ham team. Shane just cutting out that pass from Skulls. O'Mahony leaves it for Doyle. Good work there from the number nine already linking up with Kamari Doyle. O'Mahony in field to Doyle. Plenty of claret and blue around him. Back out to a fire. Doyle just tries to turn it round. The West Ham player there as Slater gets a flick on. Almost going into no man's land as O'Mahony rises, but Anang there to just claim the ball and prevent any Brighton attack. I think I'll refrain from keep mentioning Doyle's name because I did the same against Chelsea with Ronnie Statter and he scored one and made one, so maybe tempting fate there. But he has started the game very well. Of course, tickets for Monday night's game, the West Ham senior side against Brentford are available on the ticket exchange. You can still join West Ham for another night under the lights with prices starting at just one pound for kids. Of course, kickoff is at 8 p.m. on that Monday night. Mark, will you be in attendance? I won't be, I would normally, obviously I, I don't miss West Ham games, but I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to Spain to see England under 16s, because we have two players in the England under 16s, and you know they, they like to see someone from the club, so unfortunately it has to be me, a couple of days in Spain, you know, it is. Oh, I've, watched I people, I've been watching West Ham from, from uh, a hot, <laughs> A bar in, in, in Benidorm, shall we say. <laughs> so Mark's Benidorm plans whilst you at home can sign up to the ticket exchange and, of course, kids starting off at one pound. It's a shame, just put under pressure, turns it away from Sean Moore. He's found himself in some good goal-scoring form of late, Mark. Three goals in his last six games, in all fairness to... Your number seven. He has indeed. He's really fought hard to get himself in the team and he's he's made the most of it since he's been in there. Done very well. Done very well. I'm glad to say Dole there didn't find the pass without being passed. He, he, maybe, maybe we're getting used to him. Got a bit closer to him there, shut him off, close him down. Yeah, no, Sean Moore's done really well. He's done really well to, you know, since he came over from Ireland in the summer. He found it hard to get himself in the team. Now he's got himself in the team and he, as you say, scoring regularly. Scored again at Tottenham on Saturday. He's doing well. Of course, he signed from Cork, or Cliftonville. Yeah, I think. I don't think it was Cork because because uh, Sean. Oh, I'll just hold it there. Barrington. Because Sean, Callum Marshall, Patrick Kelly all come from the north of Ireland. So uh, Cork is at the south of Ireland. As I've told you before, I know a lot about nothing, and that's one of the things I do know. A little bit of geography of Ireland. And bars in Benidorm, I hope. Well, well I don't know that much about I'll tell you next week about the bars in Benidorm. Of course, look forward to that. <laughs> Tune in in three weeks' time. More. Dropping deep to play it in to Kelly. West Ham with a charge here as they try to get bodies forward. Mabama lurks in the box. Unable to find him. Instead, Atom will clear. No, I'm Atom. I'm going to make a bold statement here. This game is not going to be nil-nil. Both teams have had, have had good situations, good openings. So maybe it might be 3-3, three, three, but it won't be 0-0. A lot of goals they've scored in this competition. Of course, West Ham beat Celtic 5-0. Mabama yeah. scored a brace that day. Then 3-0 winners against Dynamo Zagreb. So you know where the back of the net is in this competition, Mark? We do, we do. And uh, I think both games took us maybe 15, 20 minutes to get started, to get us into it. I'm hoping that those omens stay with us and after 15, 20 minutes, we break the deadlock. Well, of course, I'm, if I'm honest, I think Southampton, uh, Southampton, we're playing against Brighton, Mark. I think Brighton have been the, the better team so far this evening and had the better situations. 
of course, as an observer of the game, I would agree. Ten, the first 10 minutes, Brighton dominated, looked more livelier. But like we saw against Chelsea, West Ham go through phases where you then start to control the game. You start to calm down. You start to get aware of your surroundings and then start to bring the game towards the opposition. Yeah, as I said against Chelsea, I think this, this group of players have a good group of, of working what the other team are doing and sort of counteracting that, although well, it didn't work against Chelsea. I, th I think they know they sort of work it out and come on later on. But I will say... Oh, bad, it, really? managed to find some balls into the box, but Mabama's hand yeah. controls the ball there. The referee blows his whistle, free kick to the Albion. Of course, Brighton 2 found the back of the net. 4-3 winners against Celtic and 2-1 winners against Zagreb and Lyon. They're both these sides who were in the same group going head-to-head to, head to book a place into the semi-final. Mullins just plays it back to Atom. 19-year-old Noel Atom, highly rated youngster who was at Red Bull Leipzig last season and joined the Albion in the summer last year. Doyle out to a fire, who's one of the more experienced heads of the Brighton squad this evening. Similar to Mabama, been around the squad, had a few starts and cameos. Arrington just trying to thread it through to Doyle. Later, first time in, O'Mahony is there. Kaelin Casey meets that ball. I think I think Brighton have got a very good patient build up where they keep possession and they keep probing. Very similar to Brighton's first team, actually. They're playing the same sort of style, which, which is obviously good for the club, you know, which is a good way. So if anyone goes up to the first team, they're used to the style of playing and from the 21s. I've been quite impressed with them so far tonight, if I'm honest. Of course, with, with Brighton. They do train with the first team. Is that a concept at West Ham? How does the training work here between the first and the under 21s and academies? Both teams train here at Rush Green, not always on the same pitch. I mean, the first team will have a pitch, and depending on what the first team are doing on the day, if they want certain numbers across, then it will be obviously 21s players will go over there. I mean, there's not a player on this pitch here who hasn't trained with the first team, obviously. They're not, you know, they'll do a session and the 21s will do a session, but depending on what. David Moyes, Kevin Nolan want in their group to go over. Doyle just trying to take it round Casey. That's a lovely ball finding Pupion. Can he open the scoring? He can. Brighton draw first blood in this quarter final against West Ham here at Rush Green. And it's the man who's enjoyed some first-team football over the last season for Brighton, who opens the scoring. A lovely ball played on that far side from deep. It was Lee Kavanagh who set that ball off to the Australian to run onto. And West Ham find themselves a goal down, Mark. Excellent pass, caught everyone by surprise, including myself, because, as, as I said, they've played loads of patient stuff, playing across, playing probing, and they've gone front to back quite quickly. Caelan Casey's quite high up the pitch there. Maybe the fours recognise that, and, he, and he's put it in behind him, showing good pace. For a second when the ball left Kavanagh's boots, I thought it was more of a hopeful, just get it clear. Mm, I think you're doing him a disservice here. You look at it again as a good pass. Of course, of course, yeah, that's, that's yeah. my football IQ shown there, and how limited it can be. That, that's what I thought, but obviously how that turned out, a brilliant ball, brilliant IQ shown from Brighton's centre-back. I mean, I mean, if, if you are predominantly a passing team, you're keeping the ball in the middle of the park, which Brighton have been, you can catch the opposition all of a sudden, you, you know, a pass in behind, catch it, and that's exactly what happened to us there. It was a good pass and a good finish, you, get, you know, very good. Well, getting away from Shashane there, trying to find the pass from Mabama, but Mabama was just making that diagonal run trying to get in behind. I think it was a good run from, from D. I actually think he opened it up for Sean to run into and go himself a little bit. But, you know, the game's all about decision-making. It's easy for me to say in the cold light of day. It happens so quickly in a game. That's what makes a player good decision-making. That's what it's about. Quick decision-making and 
Well, just unable to find Mabama and Brighton will come forward again. Here is the goal scorer, Pupion. Almost falling to Doyle. Got good pace this Evan, hasn't he? He's quick. It's a burst of pace. He just yeah. glides with the ball so frantically. Uh, wh wh where did Brighton sign him from? And um, Pupion, Sydney FC. It was uh, in Sydney. Local fella, then. Of course. Now, the, the, the touches, he's making a good run there, right as we say, respect now. Into out one. Fantastic run. His movement's good. His movement's good. Well, he hasn't really featured with the under 21 so much this season. Being on the bench a lot of times for the first team. Really broke into the side and made a name for himself. Well, maybe as I was speaking about, you know, Joseph Anang needing games for West Ham, being on the bench. He's been on the bench for Brighton as an outfield player. He, you know, you need minutes, you need minutes for sharpness and that. And he's probably, I don't know if there's any first team Brighton staff here to watch him, but he's sort of showing what he can do in front of him, really. He's been impressive for the last five or ten minutes, definitely. Certainly, I haven't seen too much of him when he's played. Of course, he's had a handful of minutes. I know he came on against Newcastle in a 4-1 defeat last May. That was very late on, so unable to really see much of an idea. But so far, he's giving Roberto De Zerbi something to think about. A corner for the Albion on that far side. It goes goalwards. The fire chases it to the byline to keep it alive. Up against Robinson, who ends up getting a touch, but it falls kindly to Doyle. Strikes it low. Comes off Kaelin Casey, and this is an opportunity for West Ham to break. There's more tries to improvise, but ends up giving it away to Shashane. He picks out a lovely ball to Farrington, who finds himself on the right. Shashane is there in support. Farrington trying to whip it in with his left, but good defending there from Robinson to cut that ball out. Mullins tries to keep it under control. West Ham managed to survive there. Good turn from Kelly. So far, a lot of the play I feel like has come down from this right-hand side of Robinson. Time it finds itself on the left with Scarls. He tries to make a run. Mabama. Ball brought down. Play resumes. The passage of play here from the Hammers. I think we needed it. I mean, because after that goal, Brighton did take over for us, and I was worried they were going to get a second. We, we need a little spell of uh, probing and asking questions herself. Of course, in the in the domestic lead, of course, though, West Ham enjoying more success than Brighton. Brighton down in eighth, West Ham up in second. Yeah, but I mean, unless you're top of the league, in, in the way this league's structured, it's a strange old turnout. It's like the top 16 gets split and they're in another group and I mean, it's obviously better being, being in the top of the league, but as long as you're in that 16, that's where you've got to be. This time with another opportunity with the ball in their final third, but that's cut out well from Barrington, but it falls back to Moore. He tries to carve up an opening, but he had plenty of blue and white shirts around him. Now Skulls as Pupion goes in on the number 11. Puts the ball into a dangerous area, but dealt with well by the Brighton defences. Good improvisation there with the chest from Casey. West Ham with that. The majority of all in that spell, the, mo the longest time they've had the ball up the field. Brighton bringing it forward through the goal scorer, Pupion, as he tries to take it past Louise out. Across the face of goal. Like it could have crept in at that back post, but it will be a throw for the Hammers. He's a player playing with, goal, um, with a lot of confidence, the goal scorer. You know, he wants the ball all the time, he's going past people, putting good crosses in. He's, he's a definite threat, without a doubt. O'Mahony was lurking. The number nine for the Albion. Three goals in this competition. Brace in that 4 3 win against Celtic. Fire. 
Hupion being shrugged off by Louise out. Big size difference there, Mark. It was, and actually, the first time he's had a bad touch, Poop. It was a bad touch. He let us, let, he let us have a little nibble of it. All that his touch was, was very good and close to him. Kelly's first time pass, unable to find a player in Clariton Brulu. I think, I think when that, how do you pronounce it? Poopion? Poopion. When Poopion is, is up forward facing and he's, and he's up running you, he's an absolute threat. When he's back, back to goal, you want to keep his back to goal. You want to keep nice and tight so he can't turn, threaten his first touch and, and get it off in there. As you say, I wouldn't, he's not great physically. He's, you know, he, he's a slight player, but he's quick and good on the ball. You want to keep him not forward facing. Not let him get past you. And of no. course, he's up against Skulls, but Louise Au is going over to try and win that battle all the hammers as Matthew takes it down this stride his skulls again slight challenge there from a fire as Mullins just turns around and plays it back to Cahill Mark of his horse when this game is slightly different nature to your classic PL2 game is there much difference albeit you are in Norfolk for the week is there much difference when preparing for these games of course I'm assuming you were around the dressing room when you had your three group stage games yeah no no, no we, you know we do an analysis on the opposing side we look at them look at their strengths and weaknesses you know uh, uh, we'd, we'd devise a plan of how we can get in behind them and cause them problems it'll we'll just be the same this week really it'll just be the same thing and we'll, we'll We'll train accordingly. Mainly we'll worry about what we can do, not what they can do. And can we break them down and can we cause them problems? We won't ne neglect their attacking play because we've obviously got to counteract it. Skull's unable to execute that ball. What are the few things you think West Ham just need to tweak? Of course, we've got just under 20 minutes left of this first half. Looking at that, better quality of cross. But uh, I, I think uh, our mate number seven, the goal scorer, He's very, very good going forward. He doesn't track back at all, I've noticed, which can, can be a, a major advantage because he's always going to be in space when your team regain possession. I think we can get in. He's, he's got him behind there, actually. But when we're in possession, he does, he, he's walking about a little bit when I am, and I've just left the pub in Norfolk. <laughs> Aimlessly. Maybe, maybe a little bit more straight than me. But. <laughs> But maybe we can capitalise on the hole, on a serious note, on, the, on the, the hole that he's left behind. When he's going that way, he's quick and, and, and he's on it and he'll make things happen. Like, unfortunately, he probably will now. He just has. A pass but, into a fire. Across the box, Doyle was there to try and make it to that follow up effort. He won't want to see back as he's unable to get the connection he desired. I think there are two good opportunities there, but it was a good, good cross. I think the. It wasn't Doyle the first player, someone else missed the contact. Again, it's a good player from the seven. Goes past on it, it's a good, good pass in, isn't it? The 11 there misses it, and there Doyle it doesn't miss it, doesn't get good contact. But depending there from Robinson to help out a nine. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of the, the problems are coming from Brighton, are coming down since he scored down that right hand side. Having some joy, currently set up. Two banks of four. O'Mahony, Doyle leading the line for Brighton. Lang. How do you make of Lang's progress so far? Of course, he hasn't really featured in a couple of the games here at Rush Green against Stoke and he, Chelsea. He played Saturday against Spurs and done very well defensively. Had a really good game, Levi. Done, done, done excellent. I mean, there, there, there might be reasons. He's one who does sometimes go over and train with the first team, so there might be reasons he didn't play in those other games, but I can't really remember the reason why. Clever ball through to Kelly, and Mabama just trying to turn and open up an effort. He's unable to keep that under his grasp and allows Brighton to try and bring the ball forward. He has good, it was a great run from Patrick Kelly and well found. I think the, the Devon at the moment's a little bit anxious where he hasn't scored for a while. You know, he's been in and out the first thing comes off the bench. He's been in and out the 21. He needs a goal. He needs, needs a, maybe even a lucky goal, but he needs a goal. And then I think, like, rather like your number seven, he scored, a, he scored a great goal and he really is, you know, he's confident. He's showing how good he is. And I think Devine would be the same. He tends to score when, it, you know, 18's level. He used to score in clusters a lot, Devine. He got one, he might get two, he might get three. He, he needs one at the minute. 
Of course, here's your top scorer in this competition with the two goals. The other top scorer for you, and of course, one that does play for West Ham, but not currently at the moment. Callum Marshall, how's he doing at West Brom? He, he, he's doing okay. I mean, he, he's not playing for the 21s at West Brom. He's training with the first team every day. He's coming off the bench at championship level, so it could only be good for his learning and good, you know, good for his progression as a player. Orford just poking it out to Earthy. Skulls, first time into Mabama. Can he have a chance? He tries to thread it through. Unable. The player in blue and white gets there before the run. I think it was the run of Earthy. He's trying to get on the end of that Mabam pass. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. He tried to play it too touch. He might have been a little clever ball around the corner. Haven't seen much of Earthy so far in this opening game, I feel. Obviously, the last two games at home. How was he against Spurs? I mean, uh, I'm going to be really biased to all children. I think he's a fantastic football. Agreed. I really do agree. Does, really think he's a good player. I think he does a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of unsung work, Joel. He gets, he'll, he'll, he'll get in a pocket, he'll get in space, and he often plays the ball. Be, if he's here, he plays the ball before the pass. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't always be the assister, but he'll play the ball before it. And if anything, sometimes the assist to the assist is exactly harder right. than the assist it, itself. It, it, exactly so. right. I mean, a lot of West Ham supporters listening to this. Mark Noble was, was fantastic at the ball before the ball. Struck goalwards, comes off Atom, who just held his leg there, as it must have stung Robinson winning the throw up against Jacob Slater West Ham currently dominating the ball in this just after the half hour mark here they are but if I'm honest I can't remember the keepers made a decent save if I'm honest can't remember Joseph making one either but, but we are dominating we're constantly looking to our right we're obviously by the halfway line but we haven't really created anything clear cut maybe we're just about to well for West Ham fans and yourself they'll hope so they have a ball in a teasing position Casey just heading it into the path of Kelly that's a good turn there just tries to lick it up great improvisation from Kelly Upion tracking back Mark he's had about four hours to get there I could have tracked back in that time. He did track back that time. You, 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 I'm doing him a disservice. Not track back there, though, is he? <laughs> You're allowed to say what you'd like, Mark, as a, as a qualified individual in the footballing world. <laughs> as, a, as a qualified know-it-all mouthy West Ham fan. <laughs> a qualified bias co-commentator. Oh, I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny the biasness. Well, that's why the West Ham fans love you. Of course, if you are watching at home, do like, share and subscribe to the West Ham YouTube channel and this live stream. Currently, it is West Ham nil, Brighton 1. It was Cam Pupion's goal, who Mark has been very, or he's been very complimentary of, has had his constructive feedback to give on the sidelines if he was Shannon Ruth, but at the same time, he has still praised Pupion's game so far, and he is the goal scorer. Uh, currently sees this game fall in favour of the away side. Yeah, in all honesty, if I was picking the team and he was in it, I'd be using him as much as I could because he's an absolute threat when he gets the ball. That shadow of that. Forget his... Forget his D -d defensive will be it. Mabama from distance, able to keep that down. They got their forward and they got the ball quickly. Got it forward with some pace there, West Ham. It was yeah. Orford who played it into Mabama. Yeah, he had players either side of him. They don't want him shooting, he's got no problem with it, but if you're going to shoot, you've got to work the keeper from that sort of distance. Have to work the keeper. Typically a left-footed player, Mark? Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's left-footed. Uh, Diesel, that's his favourite foot. He, 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 can, he can shoot and can play with his right, but he, he, he's predominantly left-footed. See, so the camera hasn't picked up on it, but Doyle's boot just came off in that collision to our right as he comes back on. They, they actually worked it there, Brian. There was a little set give and go, and they was trying to get the goal scorer. They, they're looking to get the goal scorer of a 1v1 one, one one situation because they fancy him 1v1. Barmer linking up with Skulls. 
Robinson in some room. Kelly had plenty of options, but still keeps the ball at his feet. This time he'll offload it to this right-hand side, and it's a good pass. Robinson up against Slater. Showing his trickery there, Robinson, to a slight degree. Orford. Barmer just unable the ball there. Find that pass of Orford. Mullins with the turn and sprays a ball, trying to find the run of Poupion. Scarls good defending there as he heads it away. O'Mahony fouls Louise out. I think we might have been a touch fortunate to get that free kick, but I won't be complaining. As, as the, if you notice in here, as the build up was, you know, was coming to place, watch, you, you watch the seven. He was away straight away when he knew there was a chance of a pass on. The goal scorer was on his bike early doors. Try and get in behind, and obviously that always gives yep. something for the back yep. line to think about when you know that if you don't get that header or that interception right, it could be a clear-cut opportunity, which it was for that goal. Pupion obviously scored. Mabama gets on the end of Robinson's ball. Gives away a foul. It's a little bit of cat and mouse over there with Ollie Skull. You see, see Pupion, you see, as soon as you get it, he's, he's on his bike. He's on his bike, and he's, he's, out, of, he's out of Ollie's eye line. He's out of his eye line. He's got experience, he knows what he's doing. Um, playing on the ground and doing it well so far, Robinson. Moore's close to him, but he's got three Brighton players close to him as well. Puts a dangerous ball in, struck from distance from Kelly. Ricochets there, and then Mullins will clear it up and try and pick out a ball to O'Mahony. Lang in the meantime. He's then fouled by Slater. As I said earlier, the one thing I'm impressed with Brighton is when they regain the ball from us, they've got both options of going long and over the top or they will play through midfield. So any team you play against, if they're just one-dimensional and playing the same way, you can counteract it. But they're actually mixing their game up and they're good at it. Of course, it did come from a the long ball, which I said looked like a clearance from Kavanagh, but of course that suggested I could have been doing a bit of a disservice to the centre back. But it's just an example of how they switched it and went direct rather than. Well, I think a, 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 a lot said in this country about, about playing the long ball game or the short ball game. I think there's a difference. I'd call that a long pass. If it's a long pass, it, it was meant, it was actually looking for someone particular, it wasn't just an aimlessly you know, a ball sort of cleared or hoof forward. So, you know, is it the, the, the game can be played as a short passing game, a long passing game. I mean, and if you mix it up, you look at Liverpool. I mean, Liverpool will play through the first. They'll also go over the top as well. And even even City play, go over the top sometimes to Haaland. The more you mix the game up, the more the opposition don't know what, what to expect or what, what they're doing. And that's the sense key. Of unpredictability. Pupi on. First time exactly, into O'Mahony. Exactly here. Found their top goal scorer try and get on the end of it and then clears that up instead O'Mahony tried to turn provider and play a pass into the penalty area it was Barrington there Brighton's number 11 he was unable to see it go past Anang Robinson wins the ball back from Slater but that's good improvisation there as he slides in and wins the ball back Doyle getting on the end of that pass play from Barrington Across the face of goal again. A golden opportunity. And how did he miss that? O'Mahony with an opportunity to double Brighton's lead. A brilliant ball played in from Doyle. Let off for West Ham there, Mark. Absolute let off. Again, Doyle wasn't the ball before. It was a fantastic cross. Fantastic cross. I've never seen you kick a ball, but I think you might put that away. <laughs> and that says something. As someone who has only ever talked about football and not played it, I'd like to think I could have. Do you think you can have, especially with your nice glamorous boots that were purchased by Kaylin Casey for you? I'm probably having about four touches juggling it and then putting him in the head. It was that easy. No, that, that, he, should be he should be putting that away at this level. That is an absolute guilt edge chance. You can see on the replay as well, and Nang, his face for a split second, looked so worried there. Supposedly, when you see 
a strike again on the end of that ball and it feels like it's pretty much an open goal if you just get good connection it's going to go in then the the relief once he saw it go past the far post if anything more shock than relief five minutes left of this first half omahani just missing that opportunity to try and make it two after Cam Pupion opened the scoring for the Albion. So far it's Brighton who've got one foot into the Premier League International Cup semi-final. Shane nutmegging Kelly, whether that was intended or not. Mm, I'm not so sure. Again, that, that guilt-edged chance was created by Doyle. Fantastic, simple little cross. And it, it should have been it should have been 2-0, let's be fair. Well, when called upon, has done a, a good job for Brighton. Of course, in the opening 10 minutes, he looked very lively. He was felt like he was on the ball every other minute. And he kind of had a bit of a quiet point, but so far he's but even what, he, face he, he, what, what he's done, you wouldn't say any of it's been spectacular, but it's been all effective. Just effective, putting his team into you know an advantage in that, uh, advantageous, if I can say advantageous put him into an advantageous position. Okay. As I say, he's, he's, he's similar to Jules. Jules will constantly be probing, be trying to get in pockets, be trying to open Brighton's defence up as well. But I must, I must admit, you know, Brighton have definitely shaded this first half. Would you see any players on the bench that you feel could come on and make an impact for West Ham, or would you still stick with this 11? or the, the beginning of the second half? I think you definitely stick with them for at least the first 10 minutes. And then, again, they see George in the pocket, making things happen, a bit like Doyle sort of thing. He's always in that sort of pocket, always probing. Yes, yes, give it to me, give it to me. Getting it past Pupion and Lang bringing it out to this right-hand side. Robinson taking it around the inside. Lovely footwork there as he tries to take it past to Shane. You could hear a clip. Referee doesn't believe that was a foul. What about you, Mark? Uh, uh, even in my bias situation I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't have given a free kick for that I think he just lost his balance junior actually it was a nice probing run though from junior and positive very positive to go at him and get into a good, a good situation but I don't think it was a free kick Brighton really dealing well here with the West Ham bodies forward of course that short-lived as Cahill tries to pick out a pass to this left-hand side West Ham might think, might think at half-time they should have been dead and buried, really, with a second goal out of it, so they might take you know, take something on it. That was the opportunity just before Omhani's sitter that he missed. Did have an opportunity again, which looked like he could have been better off striking it at goal. Instead, he went the unselfish route to try and find Barrington around the penalty spot. course West Ham still without anything clear cut as of yet Mark Barrington just trying to take it past Kelly now Robinson Doyle winning the ball back and he looks up and tries to spot the runner Pupion who is in a bit of room he has got Louise Au on to him Pupion quick feet strikes it want a kick for the Albion late on in this first half as soon as Doyle got a yard of space he was looking he was looking to, to put per, Perpion, I'm terrible with this fella's name. Pupion. Let's just call him number seven. <laughs> <laughs> the course. goal scorer. The, yeah. the goal scorer, in, who is a constant threat. And the more he gets the ball, the ball, the more likely he is to make, to make it to. I mean, I, I don't know who's been the better player of the half out of Doyle or number seven. They've both been impressive going forward, I have to say that. Now Brighton have an opportunity to try and get a second goal. Of course, they've had some brilliant opportunities in this first half. West Ham still yet to test Cahill in the Brighton goal. They're equal in terms of possession so far. Does fall to Doyle, who does strike it with his left. Unable to get that one on target. Not one of his more spectacular or, like you said, effective moments of the first half, Mark. Yeah, I mean, he, he sat up nice for him. He's right to have, he's right to have a shot. And I'm glad he didn't connect better than he did with it, if I'm honest. I still think a way in for us might be he's gone back and defended there at number seven, but when he's constantly looking to go forward, he does leave a big hole that 
hole out there for Ollie, Ollie Skulls maybe to exploit this sort of area of the pitch. He's working back there actually, my mate number seven. Back to help out his side as West Ham. A spell of possession in the Brighton half. At a time about to be added on. It will be one minute. Lang. West Ham in search of a late equaliser. Good work there from Lang. I've been impressed with him in this first half when he's got on the ball. Managed to pick out a few cute passes that have been effective for the Hammers. Can they make this attack effective? They're unable to as a fire breaks forward. Good opportunity this for Brighton as O'Mahony links up with Doyle. He's got options and he'll favour to play it out on this left-hand side. Lang sprinting back as Barrington finds himself on the ball. Slater with the inverted run. It is a corner kick for Brighton. They're not taking their foot off the gas late on here in this stoppage time. As you say, a great run there from Levi from our point of view. And was a bit reluctant to pull the trigger. Maybe there was a couple of them, you know, you have it, I'll have it, let's go square, let, let's be it take the say. We should have shot from the edge of the box. Again, a great on the counter attack. Another very good pass from Doyle. Really am impressed with him. The run of Barrington, he was in plenty of room, but Shashane with a corner deep into that penalty area. And Nan comes off his line to collect. And that is the end of the first half. Mark, I'll let you go and do your coaching duties if you're going to go and speak to your set of players. They've obviously got a task in the second half. Cam Pupion, or as Mark said, the number seven for Brighton is the goal scorer who currently sees it be Brighton 1, West Ham 0 here at Rush Green. Brighton with one foot in the semi-finals. We'll be back in just under 15 minutes for the start of the second half. So here is the Brighton goal. Of course, Mark was saying in that first half how teams can switch it up and be unpredictable. It was Kavanagh's ball forward that found Pupion to take it in behind and slot it past Anang, who of course finds himself back in between the sticks for West Ham. Typically, Jacob Knightbridge is the goalkeeper, but Joseph Anang has played all four of West Ham's Premier League International Cup games. Will this be the last? Currently, Brighton are suggesting it will be. Pupion, the Australian, putting the Seagulls up. One goal to nil here at Rush Green. And of course, as Brighton currently a goal up and it is half time, there is some half time entertainment for you at home to enjoy. Yeah! <laughs> the main man Let's is here. go! The main man! <laughs> man! <laughs> ah, that's the main man here. <laughs> My first impression was how big the city is. It's a very huge city, there's so many things to do. Mm. I didn't even have time to go around yet, to be fair, after 10 years here. <laughs> Bro, you've been but, 10 years here? Yeah, 10 years in England. From where? Uh, France. Uh, France, yeah. So I brought, I brought all my family with me. So yeah, we just enjoy the life here. Life is different, you know? Mm. That's how we enjoy. Yeah, but the weather is not too different. But the weather, yeah, ooh. It's, it's not, not different than where I'm from. The, yeah. It's not it's too different, so right. we deal with it, you know? Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> my upbringing um, in Port Harcourt is, um, is probably one of the reasons why I'm here, why, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And why I act the way I act, how, why I feel the way I feel. But of course, is um, is is unique in its own ways. It's like the food, the the dialect, the way we use our words and stuff. Um, yeah, it's made me who I am today. Made me unique in this way. Made me make the kind of music that I make. That is taking me to where I'm going today. As a man, you know, big family, having five brothers, one little sister. Lads, 
I'm or just living gonna in the go... same bedroom, you know. Um, having a big family is always good to have motivation, mm. always good advices, and you know, you just wanna provide for the family, you know, and you give your all for them, and you know that you have to make them proud, and for me that's the most important. Every time I come on the field, I just wanna make them proud. Mm. It was easy for me because I got older brothers, so they always, they always been good with me, teaching me like, this is good, this is bad. Even mm. my parents, they always been so close to me and they, they raised us the best way they could. And that's why I thank them again today for everything they've done for me, you know? Mm. Family is always important and they supporting me a lot. Of course. Basically the same thing. It's like, I have a bunch of people to look out for. I just have to make the right decisions. I have to, if I go wrong, then the whole family is probably gonna go wrong, so. It's yeah. like a responsibility to do the right thing. It's, it's just there. And then especially from Africa, where uh, there's so much responsibility for the first child and stuff. It's like... So you're the first, yeah? Yeah, I'm the first child, so... How many after you? Three more. Ah, three yeah. more after me. All boys, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, all boys. They look so up so to you a lot. Yeah, they look up to me. Like, That's good. They want to do what I'm doing. They want to eat what I'm eating. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> you just have to make sure you're you're in the right path. I don't feel pressured. For me, it's like that is where I get to live. That is where I, on stage is where I get to live my life. Like Express yourself. Yeah, express myself. Like yeah. in the studio is where I can talk. On stage is where I can feel, act, and just be alive. Yeah. It's no pressure at all. That's one place that I don't feel pressured. Cool. <laughs> it's quite the same to me on the pitch, to be fair. I just want to have fun with my teammate, you know, mm. win the game, obviously. Mm. and. Mm give joy to people watching us and the family as well you know oh. so it's kind of the same but i mean he's in front of million people watching you know it's different but yeah us me too is the same my mentality is when i got out the pitch just want to have fun mm. you know going home and i gave everything you know and of help course, is kind of happy of course, of course. so mental health is it, this, it has been something that i struggled with for a long time still struggling with it um but it's just getting better it's just gotten better and uh i have just mastered how to live life. Yeah, I just learned how to live life. And um, it's also a part of me that I make music with, you feel me? Um, it, it's a dark part, but I, I enjoy to make music with it. Cause like, that's where I find the most creativity. And um, yeah, it, it is very important that you, like, you, you speak out. It's very important that you talk to people. It's very important that you actually hang around people that, that give you good vibes. It's very important. And then to feel comfortable. Of course, when you have people that give you good vibe, you feel comfortable enough to speak, to say things that, yeah, it's very important. Because the more you keep these things in, and then you go, you go to the gym and you want to work it out, it's like, that's, that's not the best way. You have to find a partner, wife, you know, I don't have a wife, but <laughs> a wife or friends, <laughs> brothers, friends or anybody, brother someone close to you. Yeah, yeah just right. feel comfortable enough and talk. And then, when you do that, you just, you feel, you feel, it's different. You feel a little empty, because, you feel me? Everything comes from hard work. Mm. I would say, first of all, you can't get anything by just doing nothing, you know? Mm. Everything comes from hard work, and you have to believe in yourself. Mm. And obviously, family is important. Family, I always say family first, you know? Mm. When I say family, I also say friends that you have around you. Uh, always have the nice people around you that can support you and help you, mm. especially in bad moments or if you have some problems, you know, you need to know where, who to talk to. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, um, it's the same thing he said, it's hard work. The universe will, you can't get nothing from, you can't get anything from doing nothing. The universe is, the universe will always reward people that work hard. And you have to know what you want and go for it. You have to sacrifice the time, the, everything that you have to give. Yeah, go for it, man. <laughs> <laughs>
right, we'll probably start in a sec. everyone as both sets of players have made their way back out onto the pitch here at Rush Green as the second half is almost going to be underway. Two substitutes are in the wings, one apiece for both sides. Off comes number 10, Kamari Doyle for the Albion. So Mark, as I've said that, looks like he's celebrating as if West Ham has scored and off comes Sean Moore for number 12 I believe that's Kamari Swaya one of the hardest names to pronounce but that, that, that is Swire. correct we don't we don't feel like we've worked the keeper enough and we can't remember the keeper making a save so we're going to have a change in the in the forward positions to if we can threaten a bit more of course well that does mean two out and out strikes. Say Sean Moore's more of a winger, Mark. Yeah, co correct. Yeah. Likes to cut in. Yeah, he he's cuts in his favoured left foot. But Ka Cam and the uh, two more like tw two twin strikers going to play off of each other. Just ask Brighton some you know, some different questions because you know we feel that we're fairly fortunate that we're, that we're still in the game. If I'm honest. How is Mabama and Swire when they play with one another? Because usually when I've just seen them, it's been a like-for-like like change if they're both involved in the matchday squad. Uh, do they play often together, Mark? Have you no, seen well, them they haven't. Often? They haven't much, really, because, the, I mean, this season for the, the first part of the season, Cam was at Crawley on loan at Crawley, so he wouldn't have played with Divine then. And, and before that, D was in the in the in the under 18s but last year they, they, they played up, up top of him a few times and, uh, and they're, they're quite a potent threat together well on for the Albion of course for Kamari Doyle was is Louis Flower six goals this season so far and here he is on the ball at the moment Brighton's new number 14 playing out on this left hand side usually a striker and that's balls played in from Slater falls to Flower but he's looking fairly lively trying to spot Luca Barrington. Of course, it was Louis Flower that scored that last minute goal against Celtic to win 4 3. That, of course, saw and allowed Brighton to go through the group stages with a 100% win record. I said to the lads that I'm uh, sharing the commentary position with a Brighton fan, was their sort of uh, their main. Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Yes! Their main reaction. Their main reaction was, uh, we'll try and win it for you, Mark. Fair play. I, I, I wouldn't doubt that. I, 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 I don't blame them. Now, on a serious note, we did speak about, or I did mention in there very, very briefly, about, the, you know, the number seven being a good player, a good attacking player, could be our way in in a strange way. Because he goes forward, he likes to go forward, likes to ask the... You now the other team and probing questions, but he does leave holes where you can run into. It's, it's a bit of a cat and mouse game if you are going to play that, because he can hurt you going the other way. But if you look at Oli now, Oli's stayed in quite a high position. Look how high the seven is compared to Oli. Now he's sort of into. So I said it's a bit like cat and mouse. You can see Pupion bit. looking yeah. around. It did did Steve Potts pick up on on, on that? Um, yeah, they did. They, 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 there were a few things that Potsy and Gerard said. Again, they both they both admitted that we're quite fortunate that we weren't two down. And we haven't worked the keeper enough. If you remember, and we spoke about the run that Levi had just before half before time, and we got to the edge of their box, and it was too much square passing, too much time, where someone should be looking to get it out of their feet and shoot themselves. Or for trying to find the run of Swire. Orford just trying to latch on to that. I suppose with that, with the fact that you notice that, that would be fairly detrimental to Pupion. I suppose that's the point of the game. It's a tactics-based game. You want to out-tactic the other side. 
it'll be interesting to now see how Pupion reacts with, of course, the whole squad being aware of of where he is, how he plays. It'll be interesting to see in the next, or in this second half, how Brighton's goal scorer fares. Already he's looking to try and make that run yep, to the and, right. And, and he's a complete threat going forward. But if you was a, a Premier League manager or a Premier League coach, if you weren't looking at him, you would uh, you would talk about throughout the week of, of his lack of defensive qualities. But he'd still be in my team. The way he plays, I think he's excellent. I'm just saying you have to capitalise on players' weaknesses. Absolutely. And on the reverse flip, Shannon Roof, the manager for Brighton, will be wanting to make him improve on that side so that he becomes that complete player, which playing at this level tries to promote. Here's Kavanagh, of course, got the assist for Pupion's goal. Now Atom. Oh, it's cut out by the substitute Swaya. Shame. Gifting away the foul. The skipper for Brighton. Free kick for West Ham. What was the mood like in, in, in that half time break, Mark? It, it, it wasn't too down. As I say, a, a lot of the speak was about we're still in the game. And that, that's the most important thing. We're still, we're still in it. Next goal's massive. If we, if we was to get it, then we're, you know, we'd fancy ourselves. Obviously, if Brighton gets it, it's a, it's a big man in the climb. But we are still in the game. We haven't, we haven't asked their keeper enough questions. Really haven't. Orford with a good ball in. Mabama does get on the end of it. Lines give offside. The offside cuts short any West Ham. Joy, potential of joy. Shane trying to take it quickly. I think we also, in saying what I said about capitalising on, we have to guard against. We're obviously going to be pushing, looking for the equaliser, and uh, Brighton are good on the counter. Don't come back, Junior. Don't come back, Junior. Robinson sprinting, trying to get beyond Atom, but of course the big centre half. Slides down low, but it's a throw in for your side mark. Is he an under 19? Is he the five? Did you say he is a 19 year old? Yeah, 19. Yeah. Has played with the under 21s all season, so he was brought in for this level, of course. Look from where? From Rebel Leipzig in the summer. Look, look, looks a good, a good defender. Looks a good defender, does his job. I mean, in this day and age, people you know t talk about defenders. Can he play? Can he do this? Can he step in? First thing is, can he defend? Good defender, let's defend that and, and we go from there. And he looks a good defender. Anything else from, from being on top of a defender is a bonus. I suppose in this modern day and age, it's a bit like goalkeeping as well. It, it feels like the feet is, is also is, is almost as much of a priority as how they are with their hands. Maybe not so much, of course, but it still has a big significant impact, which sometimes if a, if a goalkeeper may not be so good with their feet, they may be overlooked even if they're very good uh, yeah, the ball out the net with their hands. That, that's a lot more so than in, in, in my sort of. If I ever had an era, in, in my era, if, if he was a good goalkeeper, he was a good goalkeeper. But now you've got to be a good footballer as well. It's, it's very important. I mean, you wouldn't be a good a goalkeeper who only makes saves playing for Pep and people like that. You've got to be able to pass it and, and be comfortable on the ball, sort of stuff. You really have. And Mahoney. Trying to link up Brighton play in the attack. Pupion managing to get a flick to take it towards Kelly and it finds its way nicely to Pupion in the middle of the park as he tries to chip a lovely ball in behind to Flower. It did eventually fall to Flower, but he was unable to keep it under his spell as he had plenty West Ham players around him. Orford just unable to get on the end of that pass. Shane back out to Slater. Of course, if this game was to finish level, there are going to be, there would be extra time and penalty kicks. Just to emphasise the whole point of this competition, brought in for these players to know what it's like to play on a European stage with similar results at stake. Like a penalty shootout, of course, Earthy. Yeah, just trying to get back to Louise out. Cut out by Atom. Oh, it looks like he could have got on the end of it, but the man that got Brighton's assist was just brought down there by Ollie Skulls, and it will be a free kick. I think we were too intricate there. 
far too intricate. We're in and around their box. We're chipping balls everywhere. We should be looking one twos and shoot one twos and get your shots off. I think we overplayed there. If I'm honest. When you say about an international feel to it. It's strange we're playing a team from West Sussex. I know, I know, it's funny that. It's something I picked up on, the fact that PSV, the only side in the whole tournament, obviously in the quarterfinals, that were um, a side from overseas. So it's a competition that the Premier League fund was brought in. Pion's ball, just cut out by Louise Yeah, Albert. I mean, uh, you know, you, you live in that manner, but... Um, Although West Sussex is a completely different place from East London, I wouldn't say it was in international. <laughs> they feel international. Of course, yes, a domestic game, it feels like, in an international, on an international stage. I'm, wa I'm waiting for you state. actually to correct me and saying it's not actually West Sussex, it's East Sussex. I'm not sure which it is. Oh. <laughs> Played in from Atom, just unable to find a figure in blue and white as he's up against Robinson. Here's Lang up against the other centre half of Atom, just unable to keep that under his spell there, Swaya. It's quite unlucky because Atom was so far up the pitch that there was gaps in behind Brighton there. But Cam couldn't uh, just unfortunately get it under control. Surprising to see him so far at the pitch. Can play fullback Noel Atom. Typically Brighton like to play a back three and have done in their previous games up until today. But so far playing with a back four and doing it well. Here is Pupion who may fancy a brace as he manages to take it past two players. Louise Al being one of them who finds himself on the ball now. Murphy, got the run of skulls to his left. As soon as Brighton lose, lose the ball, apart from our number seven, he does it as well. They're good at getting in two banks of four. They're really good at quickly getting back two banks of four, come and break us down. And then they're a good side going forward. They're also they get into that block. And it is very hard. Now we've got a lot on, lot on break them down. They're all set. Look at the picture you see there. They're all well set. It will take something, something decent, something clever, something, something individual, quality cost to get in behind them. This time it's a, trying to get in behind, but this is dangerous. This Robinson is dangerous. This is dangerous. Pupion has a chance to run at Louis Zhao. Skulls comes to help out his centre back, but he didn't need the help of Skulls. He did it on his own mark. No, good defending from Louis. That good defending. No, um, he's the other side of the paper, isn't it? Go, leave him, leave him. There you go. Farmer's pass almost cut out by Pupion. Farmer very deep. Finds himself on the ball now. We haven't really got a focal point there now through the middle. These come this deep. It's like Swire's all the way on that right, but now you've got Mabama sprinting into that centre yeah. point in between. I'd rather the see fire. Us in that sort of formation. Go on, Cam. Good work there from Barrington to win it back. Of course, Luca Barrington signed from Manchester City 2022. Second season at the Albion now. He cuts it back beyond Lang, just tries to backheel it to find the run of. Slater, Robinson, pick out a lovely ball through Fantastic to Murphy. Ball, that is. Up against a fire. Brighton have a numerical advantage and it succeeds there. Murphy managed to get the ball in such a good position. It was a good position. There's no one really around him apart from Obama. In, in all fairness, and I'm saying I'm a massive supporter with George, I think got caught in two minds. I don't know if he was passing to D or to Ollie on the overlap. He sort of went to neither. George's normally, that, that's George's game, making decisions like that. AC winning that header just briefly there, but like a heavy challenge made by Mullins, George, but George, West Ham George. still come away with it. 
Here's Earthy, who goes low across the face of goal. Cahill sliding. I don't think that, as I say, I'm biased to Wolves, Jules, but I don't think that was a bad cross. If you look at, you think of Brighton, the big chance they missed, it was very similar to that. And there was someone just coming in around that back stick there. Fortunately, it wasn't for us. And it was bad play. We worked the overload there. It's very similar to what Brighton done. But we didn't have anyone on the end of it. Just a couple of yards in front of Mabama, of course, Orford was there to Lewis Orford, a man to know where the back of the net is? Yeah, he scores a few, goals. Yeah, a few goals with either foot. Yeah, no, no. Good finisher as well. Done well in the Youth Cup. Was, uh, oh. Yeah. Scarls going into Mabama. Good trickery there from Brian Mabama. He puts Robinson. it in front. If he puts it in front of him, he doesn't break his stride. Come on, George. Set him. Set him. I think. Sure. Now, Orford, can he get a goal as we're just talking about it? Kelly yeah, may fancy it. That's the situation we, we did speak about. Too many, like, in, too much intricate. Get the pass off, get the pass off, get the shot off. Whiten bringing it forward. Offside. Great decision. And what in line with your fella. Wow, well frustrated. He believes he was not offside, but it did look offside from our end, don't you think? Clear cut, clear cut. Don't even bother drawing the lines. It's offside, let's get on with the play. Mullins trying to find the run of Flower, but I think he just ran too early there. Earthy. Ball's cut out from Kavanagh. Brighton managing to come forward. Mabam with his hands on Shashane. The referee blows his whistle. Free kick for Brighton in the West Ham half. As I say, though, the longer the game goes on and we're going to take chances and push people, we're going to leave holes behind us. So the risk you have to take in the cup competition, you have to, otherwise you're out. We were at West Ham in the Premier League Cup last season, the Premier League International Cup. We was, but well, I don't, and I think we got at the group stage. I can't actually remember. I, I was so, in, so in, I always talk about the Youth Cup and the ball, and I, I was so involved last year. And in, I was actually, you know, assistant coach of the 18s last year. I would have gone to the 21s, but I, I can't remember where they got on in it. If I'm honest. It chops and changes every year. It does. It does. This is Brighton's second year playing in it. O'Mahony into Shashane. Tunisian international and played for their under 20s. Really? Brighton's yeah, number yeah. six. How many of the, the Brighton team have actually been been bought at some stage and not been uh, not come through the age group as a Brighton player? The players here, Noel Atom, Sammy Shashane, of course, Cam Pupion, Louis Flower, who was playing for Chelsea last season, just signed from Chelsea in the summer of last year after impressing in their under 21 team. Okay, so quite a number. So you have to, it has to pay good testament to Brighton's recruitment team in and around the 21s. You know, they, they, that is their model that they, they work on, they? and they seem to be doing well at it, to be fair. Certainly, that's another player in the middle of the park as well, alongside Shashane. Jamie Mullins came through. The Irish ranks. Pupion. Now a fire. Running his way to O'Mahony, another player who came through. The Irish ranks played at Cork. Since I've been involved in youth football over 20 years now, Brighton have always had. Uh, connection with Ireland for some reason. They've, they've always had some sort of connection. They've either got a very good scout in Ireland, or you often get players come to. Uh, you, you had a few through through the years, and, 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 and it's, it's, it, and we, we have as well more from Northern Ireland. But Brighton have got a connection, with, you know, with Ireland. Well, Aaron Connolly and Evan Ferguson, the two yeah. Irish strikers, come to mind in recent years. Yep. Both burst onto the scene at similar ages. There's going to be another substitute, this time another one for the Albion. And Ruth having his last words. Orford. Up to that West Ham right hand side. Easy, just with the ball. No, is, is, is any of the, the Brighton players from the from Sussex, from the Brighton area? Or? Out of this side, currently playing, 
there aren't any of the from the from the Sussex area. Of course, we've had Jack Hinchelwood, who's recently got his name in the headlines. Sussex born. He finds himself in yeah. the first team now. But this side, of course, there aren't actually any players that, that grew up in Sussex. I mean, he's gone all the way, Inchelwood. I mean, he's a Brighton fan and he's, it's his hometown club. And his that's what I like dad. to hear. If I'm honest, that's what I do like to hear, you know. Someone who's an hometown supporter playing for it, playing for his own club. Fantastic. And, and, and great achievement for him. Which means that a little bit more. Well done. I'm not saying... The lads from <laughs> different areas don't mean that more, but he's great for, you know, sometimes sees his mates on the terraces, and you know, which is really good. It's a nice story, of course. Yeah. It's fantastic. like he can relate to every stage from yeah. being a fan to a player, and I suppose that's what dreams are made of, really, which is why so many people can relate and resonate with the yeah. nice story that can be. Similar to, you know, to, to, to Mark Noble, Trevor Booking, you know, local people from the East London Essex area who play for, who play for West Ham. You do know Trevor Booking, is I take it? Yeah? Trevor Booking, <laughs> I know of him through, through the famous West Ham stand. Grateful. My favourite ever, ever all-time player, you know him from a stand? Grateful. Forgive me for my for my depth of, of, of West Ham knowledge. When was he? When look, was his years? I'll probably be getting. Look, look up the 1980 FA Cup final. Of course, that'll be my that'll be my research on the train home. There you go. Scored scored the winning goal against Arsenal. Of course, I recognise the name. Don't Re just oh, d d don't embarrass yourself. Recognise the name. I've done Trevor, it already. I've recognised the name. You won't shoot you. You won't make the car park. Talking about Trevor like that. Scars. Oh. Dangerous ball in there, Mark. It was. It what was. a bit sidetracked from my knowledge of Trevor <laughs> Booking, which I do apologise for those West Ham viewers at home. On a more positive note, tickets are available on the ticket exchange for Monday night's game against Brentford at 8pm. You can still join us for another night under the lights with prices starting at just a quid for kids. Of course, kick off at 8pm and tickets can be bought on the West Ham United website so another substitution mark we'll briefly move on from my knowledge of trevor booking uh, mark i'll actually talk about trevor all night and, he, and he's well i was going to say he's, he's a fellow he, he lives in brentwood where i live but he doesn't he's just moved actually i won't tell you where he's moved to he's moved somewhere even posher the kaylen vickers coming on for luca barrington Halen Vick is another player that's just signed for Brighton from Reading on the winter deadline day on the 1st of February. Signed a three and a half year deal. Back on loop. And because I was saying that there wasn't local, it wasn't a, a disparaging comment. I'm just saying, just shows you how well the recruitment department's done. And they've gone around and they and Reading are a category two side. They've took a player from category two. They've looked at them and obviously Chelsea are category one. They took players from Leipzig and things like that. So it's good. It's, 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 it's a good model that Brighton have got. It really is. I think that's something that, of course, a lot of people in the game of football talk about nowadays, about the model of the club and how people want to replicate it. Obama. It's a good pass from Orford into Earthy. Here's Mabama, West Ham's best spell of the game. It's still alive through Robinson. Unable to find the back of the net there, Mark, but good promising move. signs, good, Mabama. Good, good move again. Again, George was in a little pocket. I, personally, I thought George was going to go on his own, but they, they shouted one more, which he got one more. It was a good effort. It was on target. He had to make a save. It was actually on D's right foot. It's on his left foot. It's it. it is out into Earthy. Another good save from Cahill. Mabama on the follow-up. Cahill matches the effort and grasps and brings the ball down low to cradle that. As West Ham, arguably, the last minute or so, have had their two best opportunities of the game, Mark. Without a doubt, no argument at all. Without a shadow of a doubt. At least we are asking the keeper. No, we're... Always, we, I get told off for of using the word ascendancy. We are in the ascendancy at the moment, without a doubt. Keepers made two saves, two saves I'd expect him to make. But at least we've asked him a question to make the saves. 
You did say in the first half that you need to start asking Killian Cahill, the Brighton goalkeeper, more questions, and there Mabama is asking two. It was a great pass, the first opportunity out of that two we just saw from Orford, unlocking the ball in towards Earthy. A little chip pass as well. It was clever, it was good, 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 good play. Good play. Collins on the turn. Off, off a Georgie shot, it come back to him from Dean. I think it was good defending, he didn't really make good contact. Skulls read that well as he managed to cut out Flowers' pass and unleashes it out to Earthy. Foul from Kavanagh, no arguments there. Earthy and Kavanagh exchanging words. Free kick for West Ham. Louis Flower, the substitute I think he just booked the fellow there. Only been on for a second half and already finds himself into the book. Just then, Earthy. No complaints there, really, as Kavanagh with his hands on Earthy. Still had something to say. But West Ham with a free kick. Delivery range from Skulls. Kelly into the area. Mabama with Atom onto him. A great position. This is a, yeah, like yeah, you said, Mark. Promising <laughs> position. Maybe a bit too close, would you say? Not that. Not to dispute uh, yeah. what you've said, because it is a great position at the same you time. Know, yeah, yeah, ideally, you might want it actually on the arc of the D, but we're not going to be you're nitpicking there, really. It's dead central, because he could go right and left foot, so the keeper will be guessing which side. Could be Alford, could be Scolzi, could be George. Who would you want taking that free kick out of those players there? I must admit, I've seen I've seen Ollie Scolz on this ground <laughs> on a, a couple of occasions for the 21s. Just nonsensely walk up and put it in the top corner. Well, can he do that now for West Ham? 70 minutes gone. Brighton, of course, still with a one-goal lead. That man there, the number seven, walking back. The goal scorer for the Albion in the first half, but now West Ham with an opportunity just outside the area in the D. Ian Cahill just. I always like it when the keeper stands dead central, giving you either side. He should be at the wall one side, and he should be the other side. I think Alford's taking it. It'd still be Scars on the edge of the area. Will be Skiles, and it's a goal! What a goal that is! The left foot of Ollie Skulls, and you said that he could hit them with his left. I don't think any West Ham fan would dispute that, and he beats Killian Cahill. And he gets that equaliser for the Hammers. I could just say, I told you so, but that would be ridiculously big-headed. But I have seen Ollie do that a few a few times. It, did, it was quite low, actually. I, I fancy him going more in the top corner, but placed nicely in the corner on the side, and then now it's all to play for. Is it with enough? It didn't look that venomous, but with that enough pace and power, very accurate. Well done, Ollie. The precision there, like you said, the height, if anything, you feel like it would be quite good for a goalkeeper yeah, at no, that I agree. height. I agree. It's the sort of height the keeper would, you know, would fancy. But he was standing dead central behind the wall. He should have, he should have been brave enough to let the wall over that side, and he, he sort of guards the other side. Fire driving forward as Brighton tried to reinstate their one goal lead. Poupion. Threading a ball across the box. O'Mahony was there. Cleared away by the Hammers. A foot from Kavanagh. Has to be careful there, albeit he's not in the book. He did have an altercation with Earthy about five minutes ago. That will frustrate Brighton. West Ham look like they're starting to make their mark on this game now. course of things carry on as they are we'll go to extra time and then penalties if it remains the same and Nang put under a brief bit, a brief bit of pressure from Flower but West Ham still with the ball Earthy all sideways to a good job I'm not allowed to bet on football because I work in the game. I might have had a few quid on Ollie putting that in. 
You did sound confident when you thought he was going to take it originally. No, I've, I've, I've seen, I mean, I've, obviously I've seen him in training do it and I've seen him do it in, in games here. He does take a good free kick. As you said, I don't think the, the keeper, when he, when he looks at it again, he may think he could have, he could have done better with the save. He's noticed George is starting to get in little bits of pocket to, to, little pocket to, to make things happen, to get us up the pitch. West Ham have certainly come out the better side in the second half, you'd have to argue. It was the motivation of beating the commentator, I told you. I've become the curse. Oh, oh, I do not but not like for that. West Ham. I not like that pass, Lever. Wow. A lot on to that. Oh. Dickers to run onto, but he gets in and it, the ball's played in. Fire will chase. A throw. The substitute for the Albion. Looks like it's going to be the youngster, typically with the under 18s. Joe Knight coming on for Jamie Mullins at the end of the action for the central midfield Irish player. On comes the youngster, 18 year old midfielder Joe Knight. You do let your colours be shown when you start saying the Albion. Does amuse me. Not me standing there saying that, come on your irons, isn't it? Calm down, fella. No money joking with you. <laughs> I'll stop calling them by no, their name then, if, if you're going listen, to be like that, Mark. No, I, I like Shall it. Shall I just call them team in blue and white? No, I like it. Knight with his first header after coming on for Brighton. Is that better? That's good. <laughs> I actually think, apart from Alan Smith, there's not enough biased people in the game. Alan Smith, the most biased commentator, and ridiculous. Now he can be on Sky, commentator on Arsenal. I was thinking of that like, finally. I think he is a little bit. A little bit. Biased the other week. He just buys all the time. They shouldn't give him Arsenal games, it's a joke. And again, they probably I think it's a joke when they, they probably yeah. shouldn't give me he, he says he says he's a West Ham fan next to a Brighton fan <laughs> well, commentating we, on Brighton West Ham. At least we own up about <laughs> exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, do it again. up against Louise Au, improvises well on the touchline. A fire beating Louise Au as well as he takes it on in his left. Here's Knight as he tries to loft a ball in. Oh man, he was there just past the post. And that's Brighton's best opportunity of this second half he as they look to try and get a second. they done well to keep the ball in play and just next to us here down on the right, didn't they? Really good cross and I don't know how close the header was, really. It was the same fella. Was it, was it the 14? I know who had the error. Oh, Mahoney. Oh, was it the fellow who missed the strike in, in the first half, was it? Yes. Unable to find the back of the net that time as well. Swire, the substitute. How have you made of him since he's come on? Well, we, we've definitely had more of the game with, with, with Cam on the pitch. I don't know if it's because Cam's been on the pitch, but he has, having the two strikers has give us, you know, I won't use the word ascendancy, but it's given us more a foothold in the game. We, we, we've had more touches the ball in, in the opposing half. Someone in Jacob, I think he's kicking the ball there. Casey just trying to find Swire on that right hand side. There's Atta. Kavanagh. Right, first time into that Brighton attack, but West Ham win it back. Bang once again, Mark, a clever pass, just trying to find a player in a positive position. Pass yeah, forward I, as well. I think as, as I honestly said, at half time, Brighton with a better side. I think the second half, it's been West Ham United. Could easily see this game going the whole way, but so far, West Ham look the better of the two. Warford from distance, curling it, trying to aim for that corner, forcing the save from Cahill as he comes down to his far post to deny West Ham's number four. Well, the, our first objective from, from half time definitely. We, we, we resolved because we didn't have any shots in the first half. 
but the keeper's made yes, three yes, saves yes. and we've scored, so at least at least four I can think of. So we've definitely improved second half. Knight and Shashane now in the heart of that Brighton midfield. Here is the substitute, Joe Knight. How old is Joe Knight? 18. So he's a, he can play for the youth team, can he? Yes. Right. Yeah, typically with the under 18. Yep. Looking at the game now and how it's panned out, would you say you need any of the substitutes? Would you, which ones would you call onto the pitch in West Ham colours? Uh, I wouldn't change the defence. I think they've had a good second half. I think creatively. Uh, good work there from Pupion. Taking it past Skulls. Puts it into the dangerous area in that six yard box. It came off Anang's leg and it will be another corner kick for Brighton, this time on the near side. We haven't seen a great deal of the seven second half, I'm glad to say. But when he gets it, he has got a bit of quality. He, really, he should have pulled that back a little bit. He did actually. In fairness to him, he did. I thought he was being a bit greedy, he wasn't. He was looking for one of his mates coming in at the far stick. The goal keeping there from Anand could have easily hit the wrong part of his leg and then fallen to a Brighton player. Exactly, exactly. Able to really make the most of that corner for the time being as Kelly will chase it. it does come off Kelly, so he has to prevent it from going out. He's unable to do so, Brighton throw. Kaelin Vickers around, but find its way to Pupion. Back to Kaelin Vickers. Good work here down this right-hand side as Pupion back to Kaelin Vickers. Just tries to take it past on the byline. It's still alive. Flowers there. West Ham clear it away. Straight back into the possession of the away side. Atom. O'Mahony. The best spell in the second half, Brighton. Certainly, but West Ham have done well to just shut it out. Win the foul as well. Free kick to the Hammers. Again, it come from the number seven. Just a just, just a good, little bit of guile he's got. A little bit of intelligence. He can just pick that pass out. In fact, when it, when he chipped it in, I didn't see any defender there. I thought it was going to you. It's number nine at the back stick. They, they've responded well now, Brighton. In all fairness to him, it's being pegged back. The game has changed slightly since Kamari Doyle came off. Although he wasn't doing anything majorly spectacular, it's still those effective little cute passes that would end up finding it's the ball to a, to a Brighton attacker in a promising position. And since his departure, you yeah, know, he haven't he, had as much joy in that final third. As I say, he wasn't spectacular. If you know the game, it was the pass before the pass, he was decent. Ball just rolls out of play. He's out back to Anang as O'Mahony chases. One of the best parts of Anang's game, would you say, is someone who's coached him? His, foot, his feet, actually. He's got fantastic feet. He's got a great sidewinder and he's comfortable with you. He was talking about goalkeeper who are good with his feet. Joe's good with his feet. Joe's good with his feet. He's a good, he's a good shot stopper as well, but I'd say strongest part of his game is his kicking. Just unable to execute that final pass there, Jacob Slater, which allows West Ham to bring bodies forward. Here's Earthy up against a fire. He gets the challenge in. He smiles afterwards, whether that was he's got in jest. He's got quite a lot to say for himself, our number two. He's not having a go at Ollie, he's having a go at George. Get on with a game, fella. Maybe trying to play mind games in this quarter-final affair, and Nang. A direct. Having it gets there before Earthy, but Mabama picks out a lovely ball to Skulls in some room down this left-hand side. He takes it in field, quick feet. Kelly picks out a lovely ball through to Robinson. And defend it well. West Ham still with the ball towards their final third. They're not giving in. Yeah. 
That's why you're popping up on the left-hand side now this time. Versatile attacker. Yeah, you can play anywhere. Knight. Flower in some room to this right-hand side. And now Flower is in a promising opportunity here. Tight angle. Almost looked like it could have gone into the back of the net. He put it back across the penalty area. Lang got on the end of it. Here we go, basketball. You have a go, we have a go. Exciting stuff here at Ross Green. A poor challenge there from Slater on Robinson. Luckily, Junior Robinson is all good to carry on. Was Substitute, wasn't it? Was it 17? Pleasant challenge, anyway. So it was the captain, oh. Sammy Shashane, whose knee went in to Robinson and clattered him. But just before that, Knight's pass was unable to cleanly get it to Flower as it did fall through a West Ham player, but it was Lang who got there before O'Mahony. Good defending from Levi, I know. He's in a great position to defend it. Excellent. Certainly. Skulls, the goal scorer, of course, that picked out West Ham's equaliser through that free kick just outside the area. Back on the ball again. Just over five minutes to go here. Extra time is lurking between these two sides in this quarter-final affair. Bye, George. Good work here from the Hammers. Dangerous ball across the face of goal, picked up by Robinson on that far side. The more George influences the game, the more I feel we have a chance. Brighton on the back foot as Flower picks it up from deep. Brighton in a rush to take. Referee orders be taken just slightly after. Referee sort of done, a, done us a favour there, if I'm honest. <laughs> the left winger was in, but... A foul free kick or just too soon? The referee hadn't blown his whistle yet. I don't know. Was the ball moving? Hey, George, George getting in that little, little... He's starting to influence it there. Oof. Good defending, in all fairness, from the Brighton centre half. It's a great ball. Habana once ball. again. Same as the first goal. Similar exactly to the first. first. Pupion along to Omahani. Strikes it with some venom. Great block. Great block, though. Good defending. Here's a fire. Good tackle. A great tackle. Brilliant great. tackle, like you said. It was a good tackle. Good, it's good, good old fashioned fair tackle. Nothing wrong with that. 50 50. Cleanly won the ball. And wins the throw in, which yeah. is always a big bonus. It is indeed. Casey's pass to Robinson as he just stretches out a leg to latch on to the end of that pass from his skipper. It'll be a throw. Getting to towards the, the end. Hammers. Getting towards the end of the game. It's been a, been a good advert, I think, for 21 football, if I'm honest. It's been a good competitive game. Both teams want to get through, obviously, want to get through to the semi final and the final and, and win something. But I'm, I'm very pleased with our character second half. We, you know, we could well have been out of it at half time. Certainly, it really has been a, a game of two halves. And West Ham have controlled this second 45 well. There is going to be another substitution made by Shannon Ruth. I think you're being polite saying we controlled it, but we've been the better side. We've been the better side second half. Definitely. Which, which Brighton was in the first half, as I, as I said. When extra time, if that happens, will we'll be interesting. Looks like you're saving your substitutions for that. Potentially. I, can't, I can't see, yes, I can't see Steve making it at the minute. Everyone's sitting down. I mean, there's Regan, Dan Rigg, Eliza, who, who else is on the bench? Oh, I forgot. Cam's come on, so. Sean Tarima. Sean Tarima, yeah. None of them are forward players. They're all midfielders, holding midfielders or defenders. Well, if things go your way, that could end up being a big benefit for your, for your side, Mark. Yeah, yeah. But as, as it's one all, you know, you, you might be looking for a, for a spark in there. That, Dan Riggs a, a, a forward-thinking player. He's, he's, a num he's a number 10 or attacking midfielder. He plays an eight. I'm just throwing numbers at you. You don't know what I'm talking about there. If you <laughs> 
when I, I know what number eight is. The components of a midfield would tend to be a number four being the yes. holding midfield player or a six. An eight sort of plays a bit of both and a ten plays in front of that sort of thing. Sorry to do. No, very disparaging that's towards all right. my co-commentator. Co-commentator? I'm not a commentator, am I? What am I? I'm a summariser. Biased <laughs> don't co-commentator. Tell, don't, don't tell me what I am. <laughs> that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> well, in the meantime, whilst... <laughs> Mark was patronising his commentator. <laughs> Josh Duffus has come up for Cam Poupion. So that is the end of the action for Brighton's goal scorer, which feels like a long time ago now, Mark, in all honesty. It's a shame. I, I might be proved to be wrong, but I'm delighted he's gone off because he's been a constant threat all night. Here is Duffus, who's also enjoyed some minutes with the Brighton first team. Earthy just trying to flick it behind Slater. He chases it to the touchline. Challenge from didn't Robinson like as the didn't assistant referee waves his flag quickly. Mm, didn't like the look of that myself. It was quite an, um, might have been a bit of retribution there. They approach the final minute. I think he, game. Junior was on the receiving end from the same fellow about five minutes ago. And uh, he's let him know he's about as well. Obviously, I wouldn't be condoning that. Mm, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. No stud shown, of course. It was just the way Slater fell quite awkwardly. Wouldn't have even been a free kick in my day. Right with a free kick from that far side. Will be a goal kick. Brighton I think the, la have been the a last five, Brighton have come back into it a bit, haven't they? Sort of say they're controlling it, but they're the ones that look more likely at this moment. We need to get together, organise, find our shape. They, it looks like they're now playing three behind O'Mahony with Duffus on the right. Of course, I know it can change yep. when they're out of possession, but Louis Flower just behind O'Mahony with Kalen Vickers on the left. How many uh, substitutions have Brighton made? They've made all of them. Four. All, uh, I think all attacking get, ones, of course. You get an extra one in the, in the, heart, in the, the extra time. The extra time, of course. Oh, a good like ball. This. Do not like this at Slater all. Slater with some room down this left-hand side as Lang goes over to help out West Ham. No but the Nang is there good to job. claim that ball. As he looked like he almost dropped. Omahani raises his arms to just suggest he didn't mean anything there. Direct here from the Hammers. Obama chasing Kavanagh. Cahill with a safety approach. He clears it forward. Luis Al's head. It's on the end of that. And Brighton tried to come away with it, but the ball still in possession of West Ham. But that's short lived. Here is Kalen Vickers. The three minutes added on. We're into. The second minute now, just over 90 seconds left. The way the game has gone, the last I would I'd take extra time. Brighton, Brighton are starting to push for the winner. West Ham could have a chance uh, here. Good play though, lads. Good play. Go on, Go on, pass. Go on, Breaking forward and trying to find the run of Earthy. Just too much onto that for George Earthy to run on to. Maybe Robinson could have got there, but. Yeah, we we, we, we was we were back defended, but I'll take extra time now when we group. Hear the, the wise words of, of Stephen Potts, and we'll go again. Why don't you mention your name? Because uh, I'm going to stay here talking to you. Brilliant. Although if I went over there, it would be extremely wise words, but modesty forbids me to mention that. Well, after you mentioned that, <laughs> the commentator was a Brighton fan. It did seem to up there their game, so maybe best you stay over here with me, Mark. <laughs> Duffus, nutmegging, Skulls as Knight puts it across the box. It'll be a late corner here for the Albion. Literally 20 seconds to go. Important thing from this corner is first contact. Make first contact, clear our lines. You think, do you think one all's about right? One all, definitely. Yeah. 
I think it's the classic cliche, a game of two halves. Of course, you are right. Brighton have come out in this last 10 or so minutes. West Ham have certainly been the more dominant. It looks like we've been looking at our left far more, but the ball's played towards that back post. It's cleared away. As Brighton look like they're happy with extra time as well. So it finishes here at full time, one apiece. 30 minutes still to play as the players will go and have their full-time team talks ready for extra time. It was Oli Skarl's free kick as he slotted it home into that far corner to beat Killian Cahill and bring West Ham level to 30 more minutes left to play in this quarter-final fixture. There was the first goal, Pupion running on through. It was like a long time ago, like I was saying, Mark, that goal happened. It does, but I mean, great, I mean, as I say, it wasn't a long ball. He's picked him out, it's a great pass, great pace. Yeah, what can you say? Great take, turn, just slots it in the corner. Well done there. What's his name again? Number seven. Pupion. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, he's off the pitch now, so you don't have to yeah. worry about how you say his name. But then there he is. Ollie Skarls. I've, I've just seen, I think, why that went in. If you look at the keeper's legs, he just goes to his left. When you've gone one way, it's very, he couldn't see it in the second shot. But if a keeper goes, puts all his weight on one side, it's very hard to come back to the right. He just started to creep to, the, to his left, the keeper, thinking maybe that Lou was going to take it. And then Ollie popped up and put it in the other corner. Which was, I say, that, that was the advantage. I don't want to re remind you of the fact that you were saying to me it was a bit too close, but. I think we'll have it because we scored. <laughs> certainly. Certainly made the most of that there, Ollie Skulls. And you are right when goalkeepers do tend to just jolt their body, their body weight is ending. Feels like the majority of it's in a completely different direction. And that split second to then pull it back to the, the direction the ball's going really benefits the free kick taker. And it did in that case, of course, that does not take away the excellent precise strike it was from Ollie Skiles, who slotted it home as some plob. Exactly, right, right in the, in the inside side net. It's good to see the, the staff over there. There's not only Steve talking, there's, there's Gerard talking, there's Billy Lapine, there's Toby Griffiths, there's the strength and conditioning. As I've always said, you know, the academy, it, it runs all the way through the academy. It's not just the 21 staff, it's the 18 staff, it's the kitchen staff, it's the groundsmen. It's the, the people who wash the kit, you, you know, it's a big thing to everyone at the academy for the, the 21s and the age. I mean, last year when we won the Youth Cup, everyone was involved, everyone at the club, the under 10s coach, under 11s, all the way through. It's, it, it's a club thing and, and they all you know, really feel a part of it. The referee blows his whistle. There's extra time. It's about to be underway here at Rush Green. Decide 30 minutes or a penalty shootout away from joining PSV in the semi final. As a Brighton fan, would you take penalties now or would you fancy winning it in extra time? Good Not question. as a commentator, as a fan. As a fan, so you're asking me as, as Ollie, as, as Ollie <laughs> Aldis the fan. Okay. Um, I would take it. I would. I, I wouldn't want to go penalties. I'd, I'd happily take it in, in extra time, of course, um, and go for it in extra time. Um, you've got. I feel just relying on the penalty shootout. Still, a, you're still relying on pot luck, really. Yeah, you are. I so know. you may as well just go all out in what you can control. Realistically, the players can control what's going on out there. I feel there's less control over the penalty kicks. That's how it can feel anyway. I've Not that I'd know. I've, I've done someone a disservice. I just think, right, I think uh, Regan's come on, hasn't he? So your number 16 looks like Divine Mabama. Uh, Most likely only able to play 60 minutes or 90 minutes. Maybe more would affect his first team yeah, game may, time. Yeah, maybe something to do with the Monday night at, at, at home to Brentford. I think he's going to maybe push Ollie, Ollie Skulls on, on one and play further up on the left and Regan goes into slots into left wing back. I think that's what do. Well, I've always been impressed with Regan Clayton. He came on as a substitute in your one-all draw against Stoke. Came on. 
can even strike away from the left back position, hear him shouting up to it, up to it, up to it. He's a great communicator. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Early opportunity here for West Ham in extra time. Cahill being tested. The Skulls looked for a second towards that near post. This time, Cahill met that effort from Ollie Skulls, but Mark, your side could have ended up being 2 1 up. We could have been. Early on here. Again, it was a save I, I expected him to make, but again, again at least we're keeping, getting the keeper in the game. That's what we spoke about. Shane in a tight area, finding its way out to a fire. Knight fizzes one down that right hand side as Duffus was the furthest Brighton player forward. Pulled back to Casey. It's funny that I mentioned uh, our strength and conditioning, Toby Griffiths, because now. This is when they earn their money. There's an extra 30 minutes. Let's see who the fittest team are. Let's see, you know, all the running, all the running after training we do, box to box stuff, and that. Let's see if we're as fit as Brighton are. Very good point. And that makes 30 minutes interesting. Or oh, the neutral more so, more nervy for those involved with both clubs. Murphy manages to chest it down. It wasn't a handball in my opinion, albeit that could have gone in Brighton's favour. But it felt like he got the top of his chest there. I think sometimes when all the team goes up for an handball, the referee gets a little bit swayed to make the decision. I didn't have a great view of it, and I'm not doing an impression of Arsene Wenger, but uh, he didn't. Did not see, well, I felt I did. And I felt it was fairly unjust, but Brighton bring it forward here through Kalen Vickers. Lang chasing in on the Brighton new boy. Here's Slater, lofts it in. Ball to Duffus, Omani's there, Luizal misses the ball and it's cleared away by West Ham. Swire, the furthest forward, pulls through Earthy and Brighton on the front foot here now after that Ollie Skulls opportunity. They are indeed. Slater back out to Vickers, who's in some room. Robinson leaving him B, but he's unable to execute any sort of threat with that ball. Let's off for the hammers there. Would you say that Slater is a predominantly right footed? Those he's playing left, would you say he's predominantly right footed? Well, he's always, I don't know what his actual, what his, his dominant foot is. I know that he is an out and out left back. Oh, was he okay? I, I just thought there was, a, there was a time there when the, the sort of modern day ways of playing, play the wide people inverted, play someone wide right who's left. But sometimes I think it works against you as well. If, if you've got a natural left, left side or playing left side, you haven't got to break your stride when you hit crosses and passes. It can work in your favour. You obviously, you can cut in and have a shot, but. Sometimes I think the world is preoccupied with it. O'Mahony looked like he could have got it beyond. So would you say there it's more, it's, it, what's it better for a fullback to have it, uh, to play on the side of their stronger foot or their weaker foot? It, it, Depends how it's you play, plus, I suppose. Yeah, it, it, it's a difficult one. Maybe if you're more of a forward, you're looking into cutting and have a shot. If you're looking to put it across, you know, in the old fashioned way, that's why a left winger will be left footed. He's putting crosses in for a big centre forward, that's different. But now the, the, the world is obsessed with what they call inverted. inverted. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if it's always, it's always a plus. There's obviously plus, you know, minuses and pluses with all of it. Bump towards like, Atom. Yeah. Got some sort of connection. Lauer just loses out to Orford here. Down this right hand side, who sets off an early ball through to George Earthy. Oh he threads oh a lovely ball through to Regan Clayton, oh hits the outside of the post. It will be a goal kick, but another great opportunity for West Ham. I do feel in extra time, it, the game could become so much more frantic due to fatigue. We're seeing that here early on. I would use the word stretch more than frantic, but I know where you're coming from. I think the game stretch and there's always openings. I think it was a great ball from Lewis Alford to, to, to get in behind to George. And, and uh, I think Regan made the right decision to actually go for goal from there. But as you say, Brighton have got in, we've got in. That's why quite often games are won in, in extra time because of the open. I mean, look how open this is. No one, no one's closing anyone down. You know, I could go and play in there the minute. It, it just get you on with those boots. Here's our me on in the boots. It's it. It's it. Oh. Orford. That's why uh, West Ham looking promising here. Struck from distance again. Jarthy aiming to put West Ham in the lead, but just beyond the woodwork. But you are right, the game has got stretched. Really Football has got terminology 101 with 
yourself just wide there, Georgia. I yeah, think really stretching. And Brighton have had similar situations with it. They've got a four v three, and the game's open. You know, people do get fatigued, and that's what happens. Ga gaps appear. Here's a fire. That's when at the top level, the managers are using their using their substitutions is so important. Fresh legs and. So far, Orford looks pretty conditioned to carry on like it's minute one. Yeah, he might can run all day, Lou. Knight out to a fire. He charges down that right side. Duffus towards the touchline. It will be a free kick. I think it was to the lane chain on the fire, actually. After, it was, he got challenged after he passed it, so the referee was trying to play advantage. An opportunity for Brighton. But so far, you've only made two substitutions. Brighton have made four substitutions would you say that's testament maybe to the fitness that your side possesses oh maybe uh, I'll, I'll say yes to help the strength and conditioning coach to give little toby a, not little toby he's quite a big fella give, give toby a little pat on the head oh that's very kind of you what a lovely colleague you are yeah. we're going to go down with cramp in a minute and i'll take it back and now almost mistimes it great decision oh, referee. free kick funny when a goalkeeper goes in for a ball like that Nine times out of ten, they'll get the decision, even if it's even if it's justified. You're not allowed to challenge goalkeepers. It's not in the, not in the rules. They have their own set of rules. They do. Medical attention. Let's have, let's have a look like at what it's going to come on. Oh, he was yeah, up there. Yeah, might have been. Might have been. I think there was a bit of contact with him. Two Brighton players looked like they were on the ground. Yeah. I mean, he will be someone. Uh, what's the number nine's name? O'Malley. Uh, Mark O'Mahony. Mark O'Mahony probably desperate to score after the chance he missed in the first half. He was the one who missed the guilt edge chance, wasn't he? To make it two 0 Certainly, he was. We'd love to get the winner. When Brighton, felt like they were strong contenders to win this game, albeit early on. Do you not fancy to get that ball? I do, but I don't. Oh. You know, it's a quality flick up for me there. You've watched it's a brilliant the assist to Earthy. Yeah. He was We're going to score now, so I made the goal. I'm always amazed at how focused the players are. Even at any level, whenever you go over to give them the ball, it's they're so in the zone. Nothing can distract them. Good play, good play. Get it left, get it left, get it left. Here's Clayton with his first real feel of the ball since coming on. Earthy, does he fancy one from distance? Cuts it back. He's playing it out to Robinson on the right. Brighton play it forward quickly. Here's O Mahaney. Good hold up play from the Brighton number nine there actually. Waiting but brought his uh, players in, into the game. Another substitution made by West Ham. Ryan Batram, I forgot about Ryan. Well, now he'll feel if you hear it. His no, I'll never forget that. about Ryan. His, say that. his dad's a massive West Ham fan. I went to the semi-finals last year in Alkmaar with his dad. Oh, brilliant. Proper West Ham fan. He scored the winner for us in the uh, the Youth Cup quarter-final, Ryan. Not his dad, his dad don't play, I don't think, but Ryan did. Who was that against? Ipswich. I say he scored the winner. He scored the third, all-important third. We actually ended up winning 4-2 The Ryan got the fourth, but he got the important goal, Ryan. It sounds like you've got good family ties with him. Yeah, no, I haven't. <laughs> Good family ties, and I forgot about him coming on. Disgraceful. <laughs> I'm not sure how his old man will feel about that. He probably won't remember me ask with weapons. <laughs> Ryan Batram coming on. It looks like he's a deployed. A, he's in a, that central midfield role, or yeah, more yeah, of an yeah, attacking? No, no, I've done, he's a central midfielder. He can play. To be fair to Ryan, he can play in lots of positions, but he's a central midfielder. It's a shame from deep, who's been an ever present for Brighton. This season played the most amount of minutes for the Albion out of anyone in blue and white on this pitch. Here he is again, the Tunisian. Romani shrugging off Louise Au, unable to get it away from Kelly. Here is Kelly. Another substitution. Two more for Brighton. So I think, in fact, you can use up to six substitutions if it's to go to extra time oh, yeah. in this competition. So Brighton with two more to use, and they will be using them. You must be worried. You're calling them Brighton, not the Albion. It hurts after being told off from yourself. Robinson. Lang just... 
playing it beyond Vickers. Good opportunity oh, here for West Ham, but Knight manages to get a flick to just prevent that momentum from building, but they still have the ball in a dangerous position. Oh, what a Orford's cut. there in some room. Good. Slater managed to get there before Orford, but you'd feel that if Orford was to have found the ball at that back post, it would have been another clear-cut opportunity for the Hammers. I wonder if the centre-half got a little nick on it, because it sort of put, put them off a bit. Good cross from Regan, by the way. Great pick out. Over hit that is over hit just yeah. tries to play it but find a west Ham. Try to bend George in. Just under five minutes to go of this first half of extra time. Like you said, stretched is the definition of the game. Look at this. Omahani trying to loft it out to Flower and he does so. He's up against Casey, still Flower. Nice change of direction. Felt it looked like he was looking at the referee following that defending from Levi Lang, as if to say he felt there could be a penalty call there. Yeah, it, it looks awkward at the best, but it, it wasn't a pen. Now West Ham come forward. It really is like a basketball game. Earthy. Kelly with plenty of space around him. Clayton finding Earthy threads a dangerous pass, but unable to find a player in Claret and Blue just in front of Swaya. Looks like both teams very tired. It's two passes in there at the other team's penalty box, with no real pressure because just a fatigue, really. There's like the substitutions that Brighton could bring on and the other. Players to come and could make a real impact. Yeah, fresh legs. O'Mahony gets a flick. Looked like he could have taken it past the West Ham number one, unable to steer it into that far corner. Jo Joe, Joe and look quite concerned there, so it must have been close. He must have haven't got the best of views of that. Just uh, was fairly close. With the yeah. side of his foot. Yeah, but he used to get across him and get some sort of contact, which he done. As I said, he'd love to score, missing that chance. He had an opportunity there, Anang let off. And I'll take this goal kick. I haven't seen anyone go down with cramp yet, I'm glad to say, but I was, I was a different, players are definitely fatigued out there. Well, it's that funny thing, have you, has one ever seen a player go down with cramp when they're losing? when their team is losing and I think nine times out of ten you'd say no good point I don't think of one now yeah honestly <laughs> think about it think about it at home <laughs> just doesn't doesn't happen is that when I first get home or is that after me cup no, of tea I was, I was actually more referencing biscuits. those <laughs> at home have a think when the last time yeah no it's a good point Saw a player on the winning team go on oh no, the losing team go down of crowd. I haven't seen course. anyone tonight. I mean, I mean, this is when you do get 120 minutes of, of football. You know, it's when you do see people go down with cramp. I haven't seen anyone yet. I guarantee if a team goes two on up, then he will. Go, <laughs> go. That'll be an interesting thing to see. Anang trying to play it out to that left-hand side of the West Ham attack. Players like Batram and Swire make their way towards the penalty area. They play down this left-hand side through Earthy. Calls for a foul, but nothing given. Earthy, what did you think there with that challenge on George Earthy? Who's uh, track of the ball? I thought it was a free kick, actually, but I, again, my biased head shows. Uh, I didn't think you had a free kick in your end, so I, I am terribly biased. It's fine, though. At least you come clean. Over it, no, he hasn't. Ends up finding Vickers. I don't think he meant to. He did. But this could work out for Brighton here with Slater. Safely plays it back. Lofted out to Flower. I think he could have potentially been offside, but here's Batram. That's his first real go on the ball. Clayton 
Overly passes it back to Louise Owes. It looked like he was going to take it in his stride and drive forward. And the referee blows his whistle for the end of the first half in extra time. Still one apiece. I thought that swung both ways, really, didn't it? You wouldn't say one team was in control or one team definitely looked likely it was nip and tuck between both sides. Just Who's going to get that opportunity? Yep. Who's this? going to get that second goal or that third goal in the game? Because it feels like whoever will, of course, will end up winning the game. But that's what it's coming down to. Knowing your West Ham players, Mark, would you say they'll be going into this final 15 going to throw the kitchen sink at it or will they rather uh, go for penalties? I think it was Steve, Stephen Gerrard, Stephen Gerrard, so like an ex-Liverpool player, Steve and Gerrard will be talking about can we control the game, can we play off of our shape, can we play with discipline, don't just go gung-ho because I think Brighton are quite a cute, clever side. If you went gung-ho gung too much, they'd pick you off and they'd find that opportunity. So you have to play, you have to, you know, you have to do it with responsibility. You have to do it with intelligence, but we'll obviously be probing. We'll obviously be probing and, and so will Brighton. I mean, it's a silly thing to say, but I'm not really sure if any team deserves to lose tonight. And it's, um, someone's obviously gonna lose, but you know, I, I, I think I can see yeah, Gerard and Steve there get, get, getting around the team and, you know, and so, and so the, the same as the Brighton coaches, to be fair. I mean. Either team is going to be a, a bit of pill to swallow if you, whoever does get beat. But I couldn't really pick a winner now, if I'm honest. Can you? No, neither can I. I ditto everything you say. I'd, I'd personally like, especially as I forgot him and I know his dad well, I'd like to see Ryan Batchelm score the winner with a diving header with a minute to go. Why a diving header? Just because he's just great and spectacular and reminds me of Frank Lampard at Ellen Road in the FA Cup semi-final in 1980 when we beat Everton 2-1. You haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, have you? In uh, which year? 19... 1980. We, 1980. We, we drew with Everton at Villa Park 1-0 and went to, went to Ellen Road, played him in a night game in a replay. Alan Devonshire scored one of the best goals of all time. And then Frank Lampard, right near the end Frank of it. Frank Lampard? Frank, not that Frank Lampard, oh. as you know, he's dead. <laughs> Frank Lampard, who was a full-back, don't know what he was doing up there, scored a diving header. And we was in the side and went absolutely crazy. That was a bit before my time, Mark, but those memories are, are what football's all about. So I'm certainly envious of that experience. Yeah, I was only 18 at the night, I had a full head of oh, hair. Oh, brilliant. Full head of hair. <laughs> Extremely good looking young man I was at the time. As was? My, as my wife had tested, I don't know what happened. But there you go. Well, in the meantime, <laughs> whilst the meantime, we had that history back, lesson and, us, <laughs> and the, uh, the condescending <laughs> comments about my age, Casper um, Nilsson has come on for Odell Afire. So the player that Mark suggested to get on with the game is now out of the game after he has made way for Casper Nilsson, who is a dangerous player. He's a dangerous threat down that right-hand side, has pace, which make West Ham give, something, give them something to think about in in this stretched last 15. And the other player to come on was number 15, Rory McConville. Oh, is that centre back. Is that seven substitutes, is it? Brighton have had? Six. Six. For the Belfast born Rory McConville, second season with the under 21s. I actually, think, I actually think, although he was like moaning a little bit, I think the fire was still quite fit, actually. He looks quite physically strong. I'm surprised he was the one they brought off. But here is Nilsson, who will pose a threat. Just not that one there. As he tries to play a ball towards that back post, overhits it. Yeah. Is West that, is that his position? Is he right back, is he? It is. And the first player with cramp. There you go. Is that Regan? It looks Clayton? like it looks no, like Caelan Casey. It's Caelan, it's Caelan Casey. Yeah. Down. Got the longest legs on the pitch. He's got. An excuse to get cramped. That makes sense. I think if he, if he was to go off, it might be Sean Tareem who comes on, who could play centre back. How's Sean Tareem fared this season? He's done okay. He's been in. He's been in and out. Is it Sean, yeah, he looks like Sean warming up over there. He, he, when, he, when he's come on, he, he can play as a defender, right back, centre half, holding midfielder. But if it was Caden was to go, I think it would be. It would be Sean to come on. He looks like he's taking his bib off. That might be Sean who comes on for him. 
So we dreamt it last night, Sean. Coming on the last 30 minutes of extra time to score the winner for, in a corner. From a corner. From a corner. From a header again, or would you say? Well, he's not, he's not going to be up there any other way, so it'll have to be from a corner. What about a Vincent Company style goal from yeah, distance, where yeah, right? yeah. he just thunders it into what? that top corner? Where do you want your statue, Sean? Well, right. <laughs> well, you can have that line, I'll no, give no, that you, to you, you, and I'm sure it'll be clipped and, and turned into an iconic moment by yourself. <laughs> Plenty of room at my screen if he wants a statue, but left left to pay for it himself, I think. <laughs> Would you not treat him to one? Nah, I can't afford it. <laughs> not on my wages. I spent a load of money in Norfolk. <laughs> you got Spain to come. Yeah, that's paid for. That, that, oh, that's a pay that doesn't matter then, does it? No. no. Yeah, he, he, he's coming on, Sean. Yeah. Sean Trimer on for the captain. Who will take vice captain? I suppose we'll see, but from your take, who would you give that? It might be Lewis Sell, I'm not sure. Or it might be Levi. I can't see anyone taking it at the minute. Might be Levi. Levi got the Why is up there. Fall to Clayton as he tries to keep it alive by the touchline. Headed away by McConville. Who, of course, has come on for Lee Kavanagh. So it'll be a centre back partnership now of Noel Atom and Rory McConville, the man that got Brighton's assist in the first half has of course made way for the Belfast born centre back and the number 15 shirt here is Atom Cahill thumping it forward O'Mahony drops deep to try and link up play to Duffus on this right hand side as he stre stretches his leg out to retrieve that ball still Duffus lovely skill there He's just unable to find O'Mahony. It's just behind Brighton's number nine. Here's Slater. Angle up against him. He wins that corner kick on that As far you say, side. He shows some good pace there, Duffers, didn't he? He don't. He Steen, is that Duffers? Uh, yes, it is. He shows some good it pace is. and produced quite a good pass, really. He was quite Skill forced. he managed to do yeah. as well, where he just cuts it back. Tried to play it into Mark O'Mahony. Just hey, behind. You, you did call it. You said he's got a lot of pace. And he showed it when he came on, actually. Joshua Duffus, in fact, joined Brighton in 2017. So he's been at Brighton for the longest. Oh, right. Out of all the players on the pitch right now, that ball towards that back post falls off Louise Au, who chases to the touchline to try and keep it in but it will be a Brighton throw here is Nilsson so he's been there seven years so when he's a young schoolboy player he's been there since hasn't he Perhaps, yes yeah. first tile across the front line and signed his first pro contract in November 2022 so second season now at Brighton as a professional here he is again with a great first touch up against Clayton, he really is giving the substitute something to think about, but Clayton almost passes the assignment, but Duffers manages to weave it away, puts it into a dangerous area again, falls to Vickers. What an opportunity as he tried curling it into the corner just beyond the woodwork, led off for West Ham again, Mark. You seem to have a, a, a plethora of uh, wide right players who can cause us problems. He's come in and replaced the number seven, he's done the same thing. I thought. Regan signed as well. I think Regan might have been fouled, but again, my biasness comes out. But the 16 has come on and has caused trouble. He really has. He's come on, producing a couple of. If I was Brighton, I'd get the ball to him as much as, as much as they could. That's what they may be trying to do. Of course, it did fall kindly to Caelan Vickers at the back post. He was just unable to keep that effort down. But Duffus, another player for Brighton, who has been in around the first team squad. He's been named on the bench a couple of times. Yeah, he, as, as you as you pointed out before. Before he come on the pitch, he's got good attributes. He's quick and he's strong. And he's not the sort of player you'd enjoy playing against. Not after playing over 111 minutes of football as well. Orford. Junior, Junior on the overlap, Junior on the overlap, Junior, hit Junior. Bodies in the box for West Ham. Swire is there. Get in. And it's in. Lewis it's Orford. Orford. I did say it, Junior, on the overlap, didn't I? Looks like he could have potentially nicked the win for West Ham and booked their spot in the semi-final. I don't know about nick the win, but... <laughs> As I said, potentially. OK. No, I don't know about nick, that's what I'm arguing with. Nicked. 
Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Again. Again. Don't want to prove myself right. Get George in the pocket. George will find the pass. Junior on the overlap. Great cross. I said Junior, Junior, Junior. There it was. I'm a bit of a know-it-all. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say Lou, Lou's heading is at strongest point, but great finish. Well, you were talking about Batram maybe scoring the header. In fact, it has been offered. So your dream of a West Ham player scoring a header has come true. And it is Lewis Orford who, just as he played it out wide, I was saying, I was going to say how how, how he still looks so fit. We said that in the first half yep. of this extra time. Yep. Still looks fit as a fiddle. And he managed to sprint from the halfway line into the box and get on the end of that cross. It was just good placement with the header. You know, the placement was the key, wasn't it? Right in the corner. There you go from there. Now, that's, that's obviously good. We've started playing rugby union now, looking for the corners and playing from there. But it's going to give us something, hopefully, to cling on to. It really is. And Megan talking. Great communication from Clayton there. Really is a good talk of the week. Getting on the end of that ball played forward from Cahill. Here's Flowers. He just gets his head onto it. Aiming to go to this right-hand side. There was no Brighton player there, but of course Duffer sprinted down that right flank. West Ham in the driving seat for the first time in this game, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 you might say we sort of half scored against the run of play, but you know Brighton scored their first goal on, you know, from a deep position, and it was good play. He went in, in, in into George, great overlap from Junior, good pass out to him, good cross, good finish. Good played Ryan Batram. Batram. Bring the ball back briefly. It will be a throw in for Brighton. Well, they're really going to have to start throwing players at it now, Brighton which they have been in all fairness. Flower, great, great decision, line the on. assistant referee's flag Fantastic. against him. Got to say, I think the officials have been excellent tonight. Really have. In fact, the testament to that is I don't really remember them. So they, 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 yeah, that's, that's a sign they've done something yeah, I think good. They've done well. And they've done well. Like and a central at, midfielder. Like a central midfielder, like, 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 like a centre half. You don't, you don't really remember them, but they, they have done well, the officials. Now it could be like, like it was when we was losing 1-0. Brighton have obviously got to throw caution to the wind and they've got to really take risks. And when that is the occasion, we might be able to maybe play in the gaps behind them. Go on, Ryan. Go on, Ryan. Good touch there on from Batram. Oh, the ball in. It's kindly to Kelly. Now Worthy, can they make it three? Just past that far post. Still remains 2-1. George Earthy with an opportunity to really seal that win. Yeah, I think I think Patrick Kelly done done really well there covering the covering the ground. And I think you have to say our, mid, our two central midfield pairing of PK and of Lewis Orford have really, really worked hard, really covered the ground. Oh Junior. Because unable to get on the end of that ball, Batram on the touchline, it will be a throw for West Ham. And Roof, the manager for Brighton, who in fact started coaching at the age of 18 at Chelsea. Which is a very, <laughs> I think, uh, which is a very young age, because I mean, at 18, you're just thinking, still thinking about playing the game, to be honest. Awesome. His vocation, clearly, he realised at a young age as well. Yeah. Preferred the coaching say, side. Mm, which is unusual. You could say maybe he was a useless player, but that's a bit unfair. I've never seen a geezer kick a ball, so I'll, I'll retract that. Here's Slater. Vickers. Knight. Every outfield player in the West Ham half now. Duffus. Nilsson on the underlap. Here is Nilsson. Just forced back by Luis out. Holds off that challenge. Here's McConville. Atom. Right and forced to play it sideways from right to left, waiting for an opportunity to open up late on. Can they open one up now? They can't. Short lived. I think we're, we're, free kick. We're, you know, with the, with the, with the centre halves we've got, Caelan's off the pitch now, Sean's on. 
we we don't mind you going wide and throwing crosses in. We quite fancy that. Go on, throw a cross in. We will win most nine out of ten headers sort of thing. But that's not the thing that really hurts us when you thread things down the side of us. But even there, when that cross was coming in, I was fairly confident that one of one of our three centre halves were going to get on the back on, on the end of it. And of course, O'Mahony is the tallest player really for Brighton in that attack. But even so, Luis Al does beat him for height. Yeah. So you are right in fact that you would welcome, you would welcome with the physical presence or the height presence you have. Crosses from Brighton. There's a little bit of experience there from Regan. I'm not sure the fella touched him, but he, he bought us a couple of minutes there, so I won't say well done you, but I'm not going to say not well done you. If you you silently you, nod your head at, a, at that he, action. He, he just made a, <laughs> made a bit of a move of that, Regan. Obviously not coached by me, and I won't condone it, but I won't condemn it either. West Ham just assessing their options, taking their time. You can understand why. Is he booking the fella for that? Referee's putting a yellow card back into his pocket. If the fella's got booked for that, that is George Earthy, who went in to the book. Who's in the book for? Strange decision, all right. It's time-wasting. Oh, right, gotcha. Knight. Brighton with one more minute to try and keep their hopes in staying in this competition. Knight, the fancy one from distance, is unable to find Duffus as it just goes beyond his feet there. Nilsson. Go on, Joe. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, bringing out his managerial <laughs> side. <laughs> I forgot the mic. <laughs> Knight looking up, trying to curl one in. Comes off the knee of Louis Al. Brighton really trying to chuck everything at it, but this will fall kindly to Swire as he looks up. Orford was making the run. That's a challenge from Slater. We'll definitely going to the book for that. I think that was fantastic play from Cam. The hold up play, running in, that was excellent play. That has just bought us a couple of minutes. Done really well there, Cam. That was good, good hold-up play. Looks like West Ham have booked their spot in the semi-final of the Premier League International Cup. We've gone rugby union. Three We're minutes. We've gone rugby union. Three minutes? Where's that come from? Three minutes added on. Oh, he's having a laugh, the fella. Three, Three minutes, minutes for Brighton to try and salvage something here. He's watched too much telly, the bloke. Where's that come from? Duffers trying to play it in field. Luis Al heads it away. Knight picks it up with his studs. First time pass ball. from Get Shane. Is it Nelson just unable to touch keep it, it I'm in? I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. The ball comes all the way over here. Duffers runs over. Can understand why, but West Ham just playing it from George Earthy. To Regan Clayton. I'd like him to go down the line, into Cam's feet, into Cam's feet, into Cam's feet. There you go, that'll do us. Go on, Cam. Knock it, knock it. Go on, Ed, go on, Ed. Okay. Two minutes left. Vickers. Knight in plenty of room. Just lifting up his arms to signal to Vickers that he is in some space, but the ball finds its way to Nilsson on this near side. Now Duffus. Still Nilsson, carries on his run, puts it into a dangerous area. Brilliant defending from Louis Al, but it falls kindly back to Duffus. His ball played in, goes over all the targets in the penalty area, finds its way to Vickers. Good trickery here. Vickers still with the ball at his feet. Mo Mahoney just past the goal. Unable to steer it into the back of the net. He, he looked offside from here. That was my fault in, initially, but if it wasn't, it was a good chance. He looks offside. Does he look off? Yes, he does. Flower no, he managed to no, get. No, he wasn't. Vegan was on the line. I was wrong there. Very rare I'm wrong, but I was wrong there. Of course. Yeah. It hasn't been a great night for your number nine, really, has it? It hasn't. He is their top he's scorer. Held, he's held the ball up well. He's held the ball in front of goal. It hasn't been a good night for him. Found the back of the goal a lot this season. Just unable to find the back of the back of the net 
this evening. 11 goals in all competitions for Mark O'Mahony. He stretches out his leg up against Tarima. Is Slater. Vickers just slips up there, allowing Robinson to get on the ball before him. Well, Orford's pass goes out of the play. This could be now, well, this is now or never for Brighton. Just under 20 seconds to go. They really have to get the ball forward quickly. Look like Kelly almost intercepted it there. Tactical foul, and you can understand why. That will allow Brighton an opportunity to try and put a ball in. Kelly preventing and doing everything he can do to stop that run forward. Keeper wants to make a name for himself, look. From Nilsson. They played it short. Three and a half minutes gone, ref, Slater, way. his ball in, is unable to go beyond the player in Claret and Blue. Robinson Get clears, and that is the end of the action. Irons. West Ham <laughs> book their spots in the semi-final of the Premier League International Cup after 120 minutes of football was played. They managed to end up being 2-1 winners here at Rush Green. The goal from their number four, Lewis Orford, who played it out to that right-hand side. It was then put into the dangerous area. He nodded it home to put the Hammers 2-1 up, and that was enough, Mark, to see your side going to the semi-finals. Congratulations. It, it was indeed. I'm absolutely delighted for the boys, for the for the coaching staff, you know, and for everyone at the academy. And it, let, let, let's be fair about it, that was a really hard game to win. And we, we, we could have been well out of sight at half-time, showed some great character. Could have been anyone's game in, in extra time, if I'm honest, it, it went end to end. But just a little bit of quality. Again, Jules getting in the pocket. Great cross from Junior. Good finish from Lou. And I'm, I'm really pleased for everyone. Really pleased. You wouldn't know we've won looking at Steve. He's as casual as you like, Foxy. But that's a great result. And I'm, I'm going to go home with my chest puffed out for no other reason that I'm a West Ham supporter. Well done. <laughs> you get the bragging rights out of this commentary duo. L lucky for you, Mark. You'll be, you'll be able to go on through the car park without me chasing you. Thank goodness. I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> Here is just a recap of the goals. This was the first goal. This got the evening underway, albeit they ended up on the wrong end of the scoreline. It was that man there who Mark was very impressed with. Cam Pupion. And Oli Skulls, that free kick, slotting it into that far corner. Cahill just dived to his left. I, I think I've so done, done the keeper a bit of a disservice because it was right in the corner, wasn't it? It was, it, it was a nice height, but it was right in the corner. It would have been a very spectacular save if he had saved it. It was a spectacular finish, that's for sure. And here is the goal that won it. Lewis Orford picking the ball up from the centre circle. Earthy involved as well as Robinson and Orford running into the box. Strikers instinct, to be fair, really good To there. be fair, you say as well as Robinson, that was a fan, really, the, the cross is the goal, really, the cross is the goal. The actual quality of the cross, so I've never seen you play, but you might have put that in. I definitely would have done. I'm already, I'm already wheeling away in celebration. I'd have hit it straight at the goalkeeper, <laughs> but that <laughs> is that at the end of this evening. It is West Ham 2, Brighton 1, West Ham in the semi-finals of the Premier League International Cup. They joined PSV. Thank you for joining us. Remember to like, share and subscribe. But it ends here. West Ham United 2, Brighton of Albion 1. Irons.